Well, every day in life is like a blank canvas filled with endless possibilities. And that's the kind of philosophy that I want to to live with each and every day. Just a, you know, a, a bunch of energy and a bunch of positivity. And we want to throw that positivity out into the world and make the world a better place. Uh, one canvas at a time or one good deed at a time. So how is everyone doing today? Welcome to another virtual painting session. And as always, the photo reference that you're seeing in the top left is available to you. So this photo reference is available to you in the community section of my YouTube channel. Hello there, Dondo. Hey, Steven. I hope everyone is doing well today. So the photo reference that we're doing, as I said, is in the community section of the YouTube channel. And I apologize that the, the layout is a little different. The colors are a little different. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, so the layout is landscape because we're going to be doing a good old landscape. I had to shrink the text. Um, if, this is, if this is too difficult to read in this size, um, I can always uh, enlarge it, but it is going to overlap with uh, the canvas over here. So just let me know if you want me to increase the size of this. I can certainly do that. So hello there, Mr. Uh, Piano Lee. I'm glad you like uh, watching the live streams and all of the videos. So let me talk about the colors first. So I'm actually using um, heavily leaning on Winsor and Newton this time. So I'm using a lot of Winsor Newtons and I think about one, um, just one of the uh, Old Hollands. So the color palette that I have for landscape today is titanium white. This is Winsor lemon. This one is cadmium yellow. Uh, I lied. There are actually two Old Hollands. This one is my Old Holland Yellow Ochre Deep. Um, and uh, this one is not Cadmium Red. That one is a Windsor Red. So this is Windsor Red. This is my second Old Holland that I have here. Just because I didn't have a Windsor Newton version. Uh, this is a Lizard Crimson Lake Extra. This is Raw Umber Old Holland. This is Lamp Black Old Holland, which is essentially the same thing to me as Ivory Black. And this is Ultramarine Blue Green Shade, which, again, is just pretty much the same as Ultramarine Blue. Um, so the palette is a little scrunched, and that's just how it's going to look for now. Um, and we have here my medium, which is Venetian Medium. One thing to note, uh, the reason I'm using Winsor Newton is because I have actually a ton of these tubes lying around. And they're actually pretty good for Alla Prima. I don't necessarily like Winsor Newton for classical painting, um, but for Alla Prima, it'll do pretty well. Uh, and I'm working on an 1114 cotton canvas that I stretched, uh, added an extra layer of uh, Liquitex Professional acrylic gesso, and sanded just once though. And then I uh, toned it the next day with raw umber, and this tone has been sitting here for about a week, uh, at most a week, so it should be... Uh, pretty good and ready to go. With landscape, I like to start off with a warmer tone. Actually, warmer than this. Uh, I would have actually toned it with a raw sienna um, or a burnt umber if I had it, but I don't have them. So I just used raw umber. So enough chitter chatter. Please feel free to ask me anything while I am painting. So hello, everyone. Hey, Chris. Hey, uh, Sergi. How's everyone doing? Uh, I'm glad you like the channel. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm also using Gamsol, actually. I'm not using my uh, distilled turpentine. And again, because of the Alla Prima setup, um, I don't want to use up all of my turpentine. I'd rather use that for the classical paintings that I'm doing, especially for my online classes. So I'm kind of trying to save up my... Uh, classical painting tools. So right now I'm going to set up the basic uh, horizon line. Um, by the way, the photo reference is, if I can get to it, here it is, it is slightly cropped. Do you see this? So it is slightly cropped. So um, I'm going to have to move it back over there, but just letting you know, if you want to see the full uh, dimension of the photo reference, please go to the community section of the YouTube channel because I don't want it to take up 
that much space. So about that much space is kind of pushing it, but that ought to work. So I'm using Gamsol to thin out the paint to draw with. And in terms of composition, um, landscape and portraiture, animal painting, wildlife painting, they all share something similar in the beginning, which is the abstract. So I'm laying down a very simple line here just to delineate where I want the uh, horizon line to be. Um, the perspective won't be too complicated, but I want to start off with the the little pathway here. And by the way, I I took this photo reference on my own. Thank you everyone that has sent me images. I, I have stored all the images that, that you have sent me. I'm very thankful for the images that everyone is sending me, but I decided I've been wanting to paint this one for a long time. And um, this one is actually, uh, this was taken, I think, uh, when the world first began ending. So this was, I think, around, I want to say March. Uh, this is in uh, Manassas, uh, Bull Run uh, National Park, Bull Run Battlefield National Park in Manassas, Virginia. So remember, when things get further away from you, they get smaller. So we're going to uh, put in a lot of linear perspective here and now just with a few simple little marks I'm going to place where all of the major uh, elements are in this composition just in the abstract and of course I'm just using raw umber to begin with and please feel free to ask me any questions while I'm painting hey power courage and wisdom uh, you stayed home from work today oh I hope you're feeling okay I'm glad that uh, you're, you're here, and I hope that you will enjoy the uh, virtual painting session. Hey, Bert, 2008 before 69. On the road? Yep. Well, it's kind of on the road, right? Uh, we're, we're painting a, a uh, walking trail. Do you remember when all of this began? Everybody was, since everyone had nothing to do, uh, essentially nothing to do, uh, except for, of course, you know, those that had to go to work as nurses and doctors and things like that. But for the rest of us, everyone wanted to go walking, to go on trails, myself included. Um, once all this started happening and we couldn't go anywhere, I started going on trails a lot. So this photograph was taken when I was on a walking trail. Again, um, I, I believe I was with my my fiance, her sister, and then her sister's boyfriend. And I think we were walking their dachshund. Although none, none of them are in the the composition, but um, I believe that's uh, th that they were walking with us uh, the day that I took this photo reference. So of course we have a few little elements here, and uh, that's pretty much the composition in the abstract. And again, uh, it's going to be a little difficult for everyone to see, and I'm going to move the photo reference from time to time so you can see the full extent of the photo reference. And I want to get everything drawn in first before I start to layer paint. So let's see here, what have I missed? Hey Vitor, I've never primed the canvas with tone for landscapes, is it better? Well, it depends. Um, I actually like to work on a warmer tone, to be honest, with landscape. Just because there's so many cooler tones to push, you know, atmospheric perspective, things get cooler and lighter in value as they get further away. So I actually like to have um, some type of tone that's warmish for landscape. Sometimes I'll work on a blank canvas that is just gessoed, um, but other times I like, um, well, most of the time I like this kind of tone. And of course, uh, landscape was highly suggested um, last time, so we're doing this. And uh, for everyone that, uh, hey, got the, let's see, let's see here. It's actually hard to, for me to read. I may have to increase the size of the letters. Hey, Ibra, uh, Ibra, Ibrahim, how often do you paint uh, digitally? I don't usually paint digitally, actually. I just use a drawing app to help um, with my online students. So uh, I mostly paint um, in the traditional uh, traditional style. But I can uh, practice the digital. Just haven't really gotten to it. Hey, Kirku. This is uh, Devante. 
Oh, what's up, man? We met at the Best Buy. Hey, welcome to the the live stream. Uh, I I actually ended up uh, succeeding <laughs> in putting the uh, the hard drive that I bought and the um, the uh, what what did I buy? The memory card, the memory card. So I upgraded the RAM on this computer and the uh, SD card. So what's up, man? I hope you'll enjoy enjoy your stay. Um, uh, your title here is. Uh, I hope you'll enjoy your stay here at the virtual painting sessions. I usually do portraiture. That's what my um, YouTube channel has been mostly dedicated to. But now with these live streams, um, you know, I'm exploring different, uh, you know, different uh, subject matter. So now that I have the basic abstract uh, composition for this landscape, what I'm going to do now is actually start to put in um, some of the, the darks. So I'm going to, hey, hey, no foe. Again, uh, thank you for helping me select the, the RAM that I needed for my, my laptop um, and everything I needed to, to fix the laptop. So awesome. I'm glad that you're watching this stream. You know one color I forgot, everyone? I forgot the sap green. Um, so let's get sap green. And again, some Winsor and Newton. I don't usually use Winsor and Newton uh, for classical, so I have a bunch of it left. Uh, and it, it works all right for, uh, you know, Alla Prima, which is what this is. Alla Prima is a one sitting painting, so this will be completed at the end of the stream. Uh, so there is the sap green. The thing I don't like about Winsor and Newton is that it's super oily. Uh, it's really, really oily. And it's very slow drying, so that's a thing. Hey, kid thump. Yep, we are going to have some fun here with this landscape. And with landscape, what's very important is the abstract um, and the attention to values. So having a pretty keen sense of values is going to be important. Abstraction is important for composition. But when it comes to the believability of a landscape, um, it's important to know how to organize your values. And I recommend about six different values uh, for your landscapes. So we're going to try to keep it around five or six different values, main values. And I like to start off with the darks with landscape to get the effect of light as quickly as possible. And with Alla Prima, I like to layer lighter color over darker color, which is actually the opposite of how I do traditional painting. And you'll see that it's actually easier to layer light over dark if you're painting Alla Prima, meaning wet on wet, versus uh, painting, say, dark over light. But when I teach um, in my online classes, it's actually the opposite because we use the classical approach, which is what I recommend everyone learn before jumping into Alla Prima. But you can experiment. Nothing wrong with experimentation. Now, again, I'm purposefully starting a little bit darker. And I know that in terms of atmospheric perspective, everything will get lighter as um, things get further away from us. Hey, Kiryu. Yeah, I'm glad that everything's working. I mean, I'm I'm the least tech-savvy person that you've probably ever met there at the Best Buy, I swear. <laughs> I'm not that tech-savvy. Yeah, yeah, everyone thank uh, Devante. Definitely everyone thank Devante because he 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 helped me out. I was going to get the wrong uh, memory card <laughs> and he he definitely helped me out. Looks like I just got a package in the mail as I'm painting. Uh, for those of you that are wondering, I did go to Repticon this, uh, actually yesterday. I came back from Repticon, so that was a lot of fun. In case anyone is, you know, also interested in, in reptiles, particularly ball pythons, <laughs> like I am. Uh, 
All right, that should be about good for the darkest darks there now. What I'm going to do is go straight for the horizon line here with um, the sky blue color. Yep, I know you were just doing your job, but man, you really helped me out. Really, really helped me out. Alrighty, so now I'm going to use palette knife to mix up a big puddle of sky color. So with the sky color, I actually recommend Thalo Blue. Um, I was actually at the store, uh, the uh, the Michaels, like less than an hour ago, um, looking for Thalo Blue. I didn't. They didn't have Thalo Blue, but um, Thalo Blue is actually a much brighter blue that I would ne never, never, never recommend in portraiture. But it's really nice for sky colors. Unfortunately, I don't have Thalo Blue. But I'll I'll look for that blue. Hey Steven. <laughs> did I get something at Repticon? Uh yes I did. I did. Um I am I'm happy. I have my um my first female ball python. Uh larger larger size. She latched onto me right away in a good way. Um but again, maybe for like Halloween or something I can show off my pets. Because most people are afraid of uh, ball pythons, even though they're, they're the friendliest creatures on Earth, in my opinion. So, um, let's see here. Uh, hey, Kiru. Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, we had a good conversation there at, at, the, at the Best Buy, yeah. So, uh, everyone, uh, our buddy here... Uh, Yvante is uh, also an artist, so definitely check out his, his artwork. Uh, I saw some of his uh, wonderful uh, drawings, a really good sense of uh, shape, value, and perspective. Awesome work, my man. So for the sky blue, I, I don't want to put just titanium white and ultramarine blue-green shade, but I'm going to put a tiny bit of yellow, but I mean the tiniest bit of cadmium yellow. No more than this, like no more than that, or else we're going to end up with an overly green sky. But just the tiniest bit. But know that, um, what you call it, uh, Thalo Blue is actually a better color to use. And you actually see um, Bob Ross himself, the, the all-amazing Bob Ross would actually use Thalo Blue, straight Thalo Blue actually in the sky. And now we're going to draw the horizon. And I'm purposefully letting the paint touch because I'm trying to do color, value, shape, and edge all at the same time. Let's see here. Hey, May. Oh, hello there from Belgium. What's up? Welcome to the uh, virtual painting session. And everyone that is new to the virtual painting session, please uh, let us know. We'll give you a shout out here with the paintbrush. Hey, Steven, post a picture on Instagram later or so. Um, sure. Oh, oh, did I forget to post? Did I post the cat? I think I posted the cat, the one I did last time. I'm trying to post um, more frequently on Instagram. Thanks for reminding me, Steven. Uh, I'm, not pretty, I'm not very good with the social media stuff. I should be, but I'm not that attentive to it did i post the cat i can't even remember hey uh mr piano uh landscapes build so fast always amazes me to see how arbitrary shapes uh, set in context context translate to extreme realism through the eye magic really oh uh, thank you oh hey scott henderson what is up welcome to the virtual painting session once again and i i really hope that our uh, school in Ellicott City opens up again soon. Actually, Ellie sent me a, a message not too long ago. I have to get back to her. We may be back for the winter. Um, as long as the world keeps itself together, <laughs> we may be back in the winter. Um, and, and I'm talking about, for everyone else, I'm talking about uh, back before the world ended, I was teaching uh, in-person classes as uh, you know, many many teachers were before all this happened. But fortunately, I've had this YouTube channel forever, like forever ago. So, 
Luckily, we're not starting from scratch. Speaking of starting from scratch... Um, yeah, no, I'll show this. Uh, yeah, this is okay. So definitely uh, check out my buddy over here, um, his his Instagram. Check out his Instagram here again. He's he's the one that helped me out with the hardware. Remember everyone when my computer died? So definitely uh, check out his, his artwork. Uh, he helped me out so much, and his drawings are really, really, uh, really strong. Uh, Steven, you mean the, the the ball python? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can I can show an image of the the ball python, although I'll probably lose a lot <laughs> a lot of followers for that. Hey Abdullah, I won. Uh, oh hey, hello there from Manchester, United Kingdom. What's up? Yeah, YouTube is, is great. And everyone that's been asking me last time about the Twitch, um, the reason, one of the reasons I was at the Michaels not too long ago, uh, by the way, I'm scrunt, I'm making these two shapes closer to one another um, in terms of the composition. I don't want to spread them as far as they're spread in the actual photo reference. So let me once again show you the photo reference. And I'm just going to keep it there for now. That's the entire photo reference. So... Um, but I do have the materials now needed to create the drawing channel on Twitch. So I'm hoping to create the Twitch uh, charcoal drawing channel as soon as this week, actually. I went and bought the Canton Meteons paper that I highly recommend for those of you that want to do charcoal drawing. Uh, so again, uh, everyone that's wondering, I've had a lot of suggestions to create a Twitch. So I'm going to create a Twitch. Um, but more so for drawing, uh, charcoal drawing. And I'll, I'll let you know when I finalize it. Now the thing about landscape is that you don't want to repeat things too much. So for instance, I wouldn't want, um, you know, I, I wouldn't want this shape to be the same as this shape over here in terms of length. And I don't want the height of this tree to be the same as the height of this tree. Even though you see it in the photo reference there, that, that's not what I want to paint. Simply because um, if you see too much repetition in a composition, it kind of makes it look a little less believable. In nature, things rarely repeat themselves. Um, you know, so it's it's important to have a sense of rep uh, trying to avoid repetition. You know the old saying that odd numbers are more appealing to the eye than um, even numbers. Just an old compositional trick. All right, so now that I've drawn that out, now I'm going to put this horizon in and fill in the sky perhaps a little bit later. And of course, I'm working a little bit darker for the sky so that I can put in the clouds. And I'm really kicking myself for not getting the thalo blue. That would have been perfect for this instance. And of course, I'll get a bigger brush for the rest of that. So now, um, this color is actually really similar to the um, the tone of this is actually really similar to that, but that's a little bit darker in the photo reference. So I'm actually just going to get a larger brush right away. I had a little bit of my Gamsol. Again, I'm just using Gamsol today because I don't want to use up all of my distilled turpentine that I use for my um, traditional paintings. So I want some kind of brownish gray. And um, one of the things that you see a lot in landscape that's kind of a stylization, not so much um, a technique, but more of a stylization that a lot of artists do, that I kind of try to stay away from, is uh, oversaturating colors. And rarely in nature is anything really that saturated. Um, in, Exceptions being like a stoplight, like if you look at a stoplight, uh, even though that's not a natural occurring thing, it is a very bright red. And if you look at an apple, for instance, in a bright sunset, 
it's not going to be bright red. It's not going to be like a cadmium red, um, unless we're looking at it from another planet or something. Uh, but usually, I see that artists oftentimes, um, you know, not to hate on anyone, but artists sometimes will oversaturate. Uh, and with landscape, it's important that you hold back on saturation until things are closer to you. Because atmospheric perspective and landscape is a big thing. And you don't need a lot of information in a landscape to make it read like a realistic landscape. Um, but you really need to study the uh, distance, the atmospheric perspective of whichever objects you're painting. Hey Steven, what color blue? I am using ultramarine blue green shade. Um, and i um, using pretty much almost all Winsor Newtons with the exception of yellow ochre and alizarin and crimson like extra. Uh, you see how oily this tube is? Um, I'm not a big fan of Winsor Newton for traditional, but for, uh, for a la prima, or even a painting that you're only going to put like three or four layers Winsor Newton will work pretty fine, but it, it's uh, Winsor Newton green shade. All right, so let's continue to. Uh, so, the photo reference to me on my iPad screen that I'm using, uh, I I see it tends to make things a little too bright. So I'm actually using both my. Uh, laptop which has the preview where I'm seeing what everyone else is seeing meaning the photo reference over there and I'm using um, my iPad so I'm kind of using multiple things at once hey May uh, uh, your favorite artists what did I miss did I miss something I apologize who are your favorite artists oh, okay my favorite artists um, this is actually this ties down to the crowd questions um, you know, I guess we can start off with the crowd questions, and I usually change up the numbers a little bit, so let's all list our top three favorite artists. I'll start with mine. You already know who I'm going to write for the first one, if you've been here before. This is also a great opportunity to explore different artists. So pick your top three and type their names down. And there goes my top three, uh, pretty much in uh, chronological order <laughs> of my top three favorites at the moment. My top three favorites at the moment are, of course, of course you know my favorite right there, Nelson Shanks, of course. Nelson Shanks, uh, John William Waterhouse, and Sargent. Those are my top three. I almost put Rembrandt down, but I feel like Sargent hasn't been getting enough love, so Sargent. And notice how this part of the dried up grass is a little darker. So I'm actually putting that in. Uh, the paint is fairly thin and it is going to seep into the uh, texture of the canvas pretty easily. And then we'll layer over top of it again. But again, thanks everyone that sent me images for landscape. I think everyone knew that landscape was coming. Um, just because it was so highly suggested. Let's see here. Um, you know, this is a little small for me to read. I'm going to see if I can increase the size of this for now. Okay. Uh, there's really nothing I can do. If I increase the size of the chat box, it overlaps too much. So I increased it a little bit. So here we go. Let's see. What's everyone's top favorite? All right. Mr. Piano Lee. Of course, you know uh, Nelson Shanks. <laughs> you knew I would say that. Um, Michelle, what's up? Vladimir uh, Kush. Okay. I got to look this one up. And, of course, Stephen coming in with Bougaro. Uh Van Gogh and Sargent. I gotta come up with some more interesting uh, crowd questions. If anyone has any interesting crowd questions, feel free to type them out during the stream. Because among other things, this is going to be a pre-recorded video once it's complete. 
and you'll be able to read again the comments over here uh, especially if you're looking from a tv screen or something like that uh, and you'll be able to learn perhaps something you didn't know from the audience the audience teaches us uh, and again this is such a fun experience such a educational experience in that regard I'm kind of careful not to put too much of the Windsor lemon again because I don't want to oversaturate anything and again I'm going to put more detail in particular the the uh, little rows that you're seeing here wet on wet what I'm avoiding at the moment is any of the bright reds uh, because warmer colors tend to pull forward cooler colors tend to recede and the difficulty in landscape really is getting things to recede so I'm erring on the side of caution and trying to paint things that appear to recede so let me see here alrighty uh, Mr. give me a second Mr. Pianoli Turner, Caravaggio Bouguereau, solid choice. Yep, we got overlaps with Bouguereau. So again, if anyone, um, if your top favorite painters overlap with anyone else's choices, just type them in. I want to see how many artists will choose Sargent versus how many artists will choose Bouguereau uh, versus how many artists will choose, you know, Rembrandt or, you know. I want to see. I I'm curious as I paint in these little uh, rows of dead grass. Hey, Michelle. Vladimir Kush, a Russian painter. Oh, no, no worries. Awesome. Vladimir Kush, I gotta look, look up. Hey Steven, crowd question. Uh, then what techniques would you most like to master? Oh, there you go. That's a good crowd question. I got to keep that one in mind. Let's give everyone a chance to answer this crowd question and then we'll introduce that one. And Steven, if I forget for some reason, just remind me and then we'll make it official. I have to think about that one. I want to master everything. <laughs> I want to be the very best like no one ever was. To master them all is, what is it? <laughs> My will test, I forget. Of course I'm stealing that from Pokemon. Alrighty, let's see here. I gotta go to my YouTube because I can't really read from that screen. I apologize, the screen is so small. Hey, Jorge. Oh, hello there from Puerto Rico. Oh, I'm glad that you, you like the paintings. Thank you. Hey, Dondo Velasquez, Sergeant Monet. You know, Monet deserves some more love too, especially now that we're doing landscape. And I'm gonna stick more with an impressionistic style landscape. Um, not so much with color, but with simplification. So definitely Monet. Hey, David Dowden. Hello there from New Orleans. Arc, Arkip? Okay, I gotta look the first one up. And the second one. I And the third one. Okay, thank you so much for uh, the names. I have to look up the names. And of course, I'm glad to have you in the online classes. I hope you're enjoying the online classes. Hey, Griox, can I speak some words in Croatian? Unfortunately, I don't, I don't even know a single word in Croatian. But I'll tell you another YouTube uh, channel that... Um, I actually follow one YouTuber that is in Croatia. Uh, the YouTube channel is called The Dark Den. But he, he uh, produces tarantula videos. So if anyone doesn't like tarantula, then that's probably not the channel for you. I think he actually has one video in Croatia, uh, Croatian. Hey, Chad. Sergeant Richard Schmid and... Uh, Claire uh, hmm. Wiltser, awesome. Hey, mate. 
Oh, yes, mate. Elizabeth Vijay Lebrun. Yes, she is one of my top favorite painters as well. Frida Kahlo, she's awesome. Artemisia Janileski is awesome as well. Actually, uh, Vijay Lebrun, one of her paintings was actually uh, the first representational painting I ever saw that really motivated me to pursue classical uh, painting or to pursue, pursue representational painting. A shout out to Vijay Lebrun. And if you haven't heard of Vijay Lebrun, please look look up the name that is typed over here. Look up this name if you haven't heard this one. Uh, Vijay Lebrun is amazing. Hey Steven, I prefer Renoir over Monet. I don't know why. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. We are entitled to our own uh, preferences. All right, so now that I have the the foreground covered, I'm going to start to put in more planes. And when you're painting landscape, just like when you're painting anything else, planes are going to be very, very important. So I'm going to start off with planes in the distance as everyone is typing their, their favorite three painters. Remember, crowd question, everyone that's just joining in. What are your three favorite painters? Who are your three favorite painters? Do I ever do surrealist painting, Michelle? Um, not really, but we can experiment with things like that in the future. I have never done it. Oh, actually, I shouldn't say that. I have done maybe three surrealist paintings in my entire life. Um, I called them the Footman series back when I was... Uh, before I actually started doing um, classical painting or representational painting, uh, I titled it Footman. Now I'm going to introduce some of the reds, but I'm going to be very ca uh, very cautious with the reds. Just like you want to be cautious with the co uh, cooler colors with skin tones, with portraiture, you want to be cautious with the warm colors uh, when it comes to landscape. So I'm painting this kind of an off blue and I'm squinting uh, to see value. You want to squint to see value, blur your eyes to see color, and I see that this value should be darker. So I'm going to paint one spot first, stand back, and then gauge whether that spot is correct relative to the surrounding shapes. Hey Griox, what do you think about paintings of... Okay, no, no, no. <laughs> That's when I start to whistle. Okay, I can't whistle that well because my <laughs> my lips are dry. That's why I have water bottle over here. Leonardo da Vinci, what is up? Welcome to the stream. So I thought you would have written Leonardo da Vinci as your first there. Uh, Soroya, Gustav Kemp, and... Um, Francisco de Goya, awesome, awesome selection there. Oh yes, I forgot. Um, so everyone that is interested in the online courses, <laughs> yeah, I've tried to whistle and failing. Everyone that is interested in the online courses, here is another sneak peek into what I was actually filming today. This is a screenshot of an unfinished painting. This is project two. That is, uh, that was filmed, the lesson was filmed this morning. So this is a screenshot of project two, uh, an ongoing project uh, for my online students. Um, so just giving you a little glimpse there of project two. And don't worry, I'll show that image from time to time. And again, we do the classical painting approach uh, for the online classes, but we are going to now start to uh, incorporate uh, drawing in particular, I'm going to start off with uh, technical linear drawing uh, for my online students. Let me see here. Yeah, me trying to whistle. All right, let me. I really have to squint my eyes. I think I'm losing my eyesight. Hey, Mo IQ. Uh, what do you think about uh, Frederick? Okay, the name is familiar. I'm just drawing a blank. I apologize, I'm kind of drawing a blank on this one. Oh, thanks, Michelle. And again, that was filmed just this morning. So again, my online classes are $10 a month. Gets you access to all of the 
online lessons and all of the virtual classrooms. And again, it allows you to send images to me each week of your projects, your, your classwork. All right, so I have to squint and see. Hey, Hector, what's up? I have to squint and see. Um, OK, so I'm going to grow this distance here. And I'm going to make it a little darker and less saturated. It's a little too saturated. So ivory black, not even ivory. This is a uh, lamp black, sorry. It's the same. And if anyone is interested in knowing what materials I suggest you use, um, please check the description box of this video. And remember earlier um, in the stream I mentioned to not use too many values with landscape and to group your values together. So now, about now is the time where we can start to talk about that as everyone writes their favorite painters. Again, what are your top three favorite painters? Um, okay, give me a second here. Hey, Alexander, what varnish do I use? Uh, I use, at the moment, I'm actually using Gamvar. Uh, Gamvar. Uh, gloss, Gamvar Gloss Picture Varnish, just because you can use it while the painting is touch dry, and I really like that aspect about it. Alrighty. What have I missed? Hey, Volker. Millet, awesome. Lucian Freud, awesome, awesome. And Van Gogh, great selection. Great selection. Now a little bit of a lizard and crimson lake extra. The tiniest amount for this darker plane. And planes are very important, as I always say. Um, but in particular with landscape, they are crucial. So already we have a simple grouping of values. We have uh, we're exploring further into linear perspective, and um, composition. Alrighty, let me see here. Hey, uh, Emo IQ, Frederick uh, Langton, the one who did who painted Flaming June. Why am I still drawing a blank? Watch, after the stream ends, I'll be like, oh, that was... Uh, was he one of the pre-Raphaelites? It sounds like one of the pre-Raphaelites. Hey, Tanya. What's up? Sergeant Manet and Rembrandt. Very, very awesome selection. And even the... The walking, the the walking space, the what I'm, I'm drawing a blank. What is going on with me today? The path here is going to have different planes. Uh, does anyone here currently um, use Twitch or? Uh, stream on Twitch or watch any st streamers on Twitch. So I've never been on Twitch. So after the stream ends, I'm going to do some research into how to start it for the uh, drawing, charcoal drawing videos or streams. Just, just curious. Mm, let me see here. Hey, Steven, what's the difference between a lizard and crimson and the lake? Uh, I like to use a lizard and crimson lake extra. One of the motivators of me getting this color that I'm actually using right now, a lizard and crimson lake extra, is that it was on Nelson Shank's palette, um, and the brand is Old Holland. Um, so he had a lizard and crimson lake extra, and uh, what I believe is it is a deeper alizarin. So this alizarin right here, the the one that I'm pointing to right here, is a deeper uh, red than um, if you were to buy just alizarin crimson or even alizarin permanent. 
So the Alizarin Crimson Lake Extra I like because it's a much deeper red. Now it's a very light fast color so I'm not too concerned about it fading away anytime soon. And I'm using Windsor Red here in case anyone's wondering. Windsor Red uh, by Windsor Newton is nowhere near as bright as a Cadmium Red which is another reason I have it here. I wouldn't want to have a Cadmium Red in this landscape. Because the difficulty with landscape, at least for me, is to get paint the effect of things receding into the distance. And warmer colors, remember, tend to pull towards you, whereas cooler colors tend to recede. And what I want is for this to recede into the distance. Hey Tanya. Well, good evening also. Thanks for watching from the UK. I'm glad you are enjoying the uh, landscape video. Now I'm going to get the palette knife uh, because there's a very sharp edge. Uh, so you want to look for edges as well in landscapes. And though I can't see how I can't overlap the palette knife, imagine if the palette knife kept going, it would point right at the edge over here. So I'm going to paint that edge. Uh, palette knives are nice for sharp edges because you, you not only can you clean easily, um, but you can get a really sharp edge with a palette knife. Clearly, I don't want it to be that saturated of a yellow because of atmospheric perspective, so I'm going to dull it out with the sap green. Sap green is a color I used to use in um, in uh, flesh tones but I don't use it so much anymore. Let's see here. Hey Rodney! Welcome to the live stream. Again everyone that uh, if this is your first time or you've, you've been here several times, please let us know and we'll give you a shout out with the either the palette knife or with a brush. Hey Michelle, I heard Zinc White makes your painting crack. Um, yeah, Zinc White, I heard the same thing as well. I used to use Zinc White, um, but whenever I need to have, um, you know, a different texture of of a, a white color. I'll use this one right here. I don't have it on my palette today because I, I'm not going to be layering this painting um, at all. I'm not going to be layering wet over dry. This is all going to be completed today, wet on wet. Uh, Williamsburg Flake White right here. Williamsburg Flake White. Very heavy paint too, but really solid color. And um, I recommend it for portraiture in particular. And I think we used it with the painting of the cat. But for landscape, I don't really think you need it. So now I have a nice little roll of paint, as you're seeing here. So now I'm going to go ahead and start to, with the palette knife, get some really sharp edges. Because what this is, is one plane changing in the distance into another plane. So this is probably a hill that is receding. So you need to paint in uh, the specificity of these hills. And a nice thing about landscapes in particular, these kind of landscapes, is that um, is that you don't have to have a super razor straight line because there's a lot of hills. So there's nothing to worry about. And as you saw, I just ran my finger through the paint. I'm not using flake white, so I have no problems with that. Nor do I have any, too many cadmiums. Actually, I have one cadmium, but I think I'll live. Hey, Mr. Uh, Shihabi, what is up? Oh, you're new to the stream. Welcome. Welcome shout out to you with the palette knife and with the brush in case the palette knife is intimidating. Welcome. 
to the live stream. I hope that you will enjoy your stay here in our virtual painting session. Um, and again, this is a crowd effort. Everyone here in the audience makes these streams awesome. I'm actually running out of paint for this um, horizon. Ready for some palette knife ASMR. You know, I think there's even YouTube videos of like Bob Ross palette knife ASMR or something like that. I cannot for the life of me uh, figure out why anyone would want to hear this over and over. <laughs> But, uh, I don't know, to each their own. <laughs> I'm going to remix another color, uh, another horizon color to paint a different plane, as you'll see in a little bit. Yep, no problem, Mr. Uh, Shihabi. All right, I'm going to have to zoom in here. What art school did I go to? I, um... I attribute a lot of my learning to Studio Incominati and Paulden Hamilton. So Studio Incominati is a school, a contemporary realist school in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I studied there for a year and lived with one of the artists as well um, named Robin Fry, uh, who also taught me so much. Um, so Studio Incominati, um, let me see here. I just got another question. <laughs> Uh, yep, Bob is the king of ASMR. Yep, Tanya, definitely. Hey, Mr. Shihabi, how long does it take you to get uh, 60,000 subscribers? I'm stuck at 35. 35 is a lot. Um, it took a long time. I think it took me maybe, I don't know, like three years or two years to get, to get 60,000 subscribers, I think. I don't know where I'm at now, but uh, to be honest, I, I don't really... I don't know. I'm not very good at that, at checking. I think I'm at 65,000. I'm not sure. That being said, if you would like to uh, have notifications of when I stream uh, again in the future, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm notorious for forgetting to put in the usual, uh, you know, the usual YouTuber talk. Hit the like button. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm not very good at that. <laughs> I, I oftentimes forget that, um, but it took me, I think, about three years to get 60,000 or something like that. Hey, Christine. Oh, I'm glad uh, that you're you're liking the landscape uh, video so far. And again, anyone that likes the, you know, the teaching and my YouTube videos, definitely check this out. Again, this is uh, what we're working on currently. One of the projects in my online class Again, for my online classes, we uh, use the classical approach to painting. And then uh, I highly suggest using the classical approach to learn. Right now, I'm just trying to get a tiny little roll of paint. Uh, and I didn't forget, I was talking about the schools I went to. So, um, Studio in Kaminati for a year, and Paulden Hamilton, uh, if anyone needs me to type out his name, I can. Uh, he's a uh, teacher based in Timonium. Maryland, um, he pretty much took me in when I was uh, a little youngster and taught me a lot. I, I attribute my umber drawing to Paulden Hamilton. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and type his name in there. Oh, I have 62,000 subscribers. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't. I don't really check it. Uh, 62,000, that's awesome. Thank you, everyone that is subscribed. I'm gonna write his name now. Now you're really seeing like live how impervious I am to looking at at the numbers. I apologize for that. So let me type out Paulden Hamilton's name. I believe I also made a video featuring his artwork back when I was doing the videos daily, and uh, Dondo actually posted the. Uh, Link to Studio and Kaminati. Thank you, Dondo, for posting that. So it's it actually already passed. It was up there, but here's the name of Paulden Hamilton. Definitely check out his artwork. Um, and again, he he helped me out so much. Even you know, 
I couldn't afford art classes back in the day, and he would just he would take me in and and, and teach me so much. Um, Paulden's style to teaching was more more of a um, let you figure it out on your own, and then when you make mistakes, I will correct you kind of way of teaching, which I found very useful. More palette knife ASMR there for you. See how you really need those planes to get the effective distance. Hey, hello there. Uh, Bar, Barha, Barhawaj, I'm oh, sorry, I mispronounced your name. I have 65, what? 65.2 thousand subscribers, not 62.5. Well, you know, whether it be 65,000 or 65, what matters to me is all of you. You right there. Yes, you. You matter to me more than the, the number itself. I'm so fortunate to have... I'm using both hands because it's such, so important to say. I am so fortunate to have such great viewers. Um, every one of you, I'm so thankful for every single one of you. Again, whether it's 60,000 or 60, doesn't matter to me. As long as, um, you know, the, the community that we have here is a wonderful community. We all grow and learn from each other. That's that's what's important. But of course, I want to have more online students to, to be practical. That would that would be good. <laughs> so if you're interested in, in learning with me, please check out my online classes. Hey, Volker. Discovered him on Instagram. Oh, you did? Yeah, he's definitely... Um, I was trying to get him to post more on Instagram, Volker, but um, yeah, he's a wonderful, wonderful painter. He's kind of like a Klimt style sometimes with his paintings. Hey, Fernando. Hello there. Thanks for watching from Brazil. Hey, Emo IQ. I wish I could be good at social media stuff. It might take time to be good at it. Or that's how we are. Yeah, I'm not very good with social media stuff. I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be. Hey, Abdullah. Have you got your own studio yet? Unfortunately, no. No. Uh, that's one of the reasons I can't really work on Sunday. I don't have this space available on Sunday. I'll get there eventually. I'm just not financially there yet. Hey, uh, Brahawaji. Sorry, I mispronounced your name again. Oh, I'm glad I've been an influence in your drawings and paintings. And again, I would love to have you in my online classes if you would like to push your learning with me even further. Remember, only $10 a month. Hey, Barbara. First time viewing. All right. Let me get to the, let me get to the screen really quickly. Give you a shout out with my brush. Where, where are we? All right, Barbara. Welcome. First time viewing from uh, Australia. Awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in to the live stream. I hope you're enjoying. Let's see here. Abdullah. Oh, thank you so much for being a subscriber. Shout out to you here. Where where am I? There you go. Shout out to you with uh, my paintbrush. Just me and my paintbrush. Hey, Jenny. Hello there from Sydney, Australia. Thank you for watching the live stream. Hey, Barry. Have I ever tried egg tempera? No, I haven't tried egg tempera, but I would be curious to try it, actually. So I'm actually going to put in a little more blue now to the um, the, the uh, landscape. In particular, these little bushes back here. And I'm going to drop the value, or actually raise it, depending on how you gauge your values. To paint more of the effective distance on this, on this landscape. And then we're going to get to those like nice and epic clouds soon. Hey, Barry. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely would like to try egg tempera. And um, this is one of the reasons I don't usually use canvas is because it, it is glaring a tiny bit. 
Um, so it's, it's glaring a tiny bit because of the, see how it's not glaring anymore. It's glaring a little bit because of the angle of the light that I have. So if I adjust it a little bit, it may glare less. Hey, Pablo. Is there anything I don't know to paint? Oh, of course. You know, every, every day we're learning. Every day I'm learning too. But in particular, I specialize in um, portraiture, classical, um, classical portraiture. And uh, for portraiture, I have very specific um, procedures. All right, let's go ahead and start to paint some planes onto the trees here. Oh, thanks, Pavla. Hey, Abdul, have I ever tried painting abstract? Um, not in a while, but um, there was a point where I did try to create a, like, a abstract paintings for art school. If anyone's wondering, I did also attend um, MICA, Maryland Institute College of Art, for about a semester before I dropped out of it. Um, I won't get into the reasons why, but I will say I met some of the, like, the coolest people ever at MICA. Um, but there I did, well... I did abstract art there because it was part of the homework. I don't think I'm going to put this branch in here, but I, I may. At this point, I don't think I'll put that branch. But I am going to share up this... Uh, cast shadow pretty soon let's see here hey Barry have I ever hired models to sit for you no actually I never really had the means to do that it's pretty expensive uh, for a model to sit just for me um, but I before the world ended I did run a um, uh, portrait painting session in Howard County Maryland hopefully it opens up again in the spring you know, um, I'm hoping the world gets its act together. Um, but yeah, once that opens up, once the uh, painting sessions open up, I'll invite everyone. All of you are invited. We can do little meet and greets there as well. And paint from a live model. How about that? If anyone wants to make the journey to Maryland, uh, Howard County, Maryland, if anyone would be interested to meet me. Hey, Pablo. Oh, thank you. Oh, man, I, I miss painting um, painting uh, models from life. I've done a lot of self-portraits. Um, my most recent one is on Instagram. It's a self-portrait of me with my uh, one of my ball pythons named Zorro. I want to do a self-portrait with each one of my ball pythons. I currently have three. Um, what medium? This is Venetian medium from Rublev, um, but I haven't used it yet. Uh, I'll let you know when I do use it. I usually will use it in Alla Prima just to thin out paint or to make paint tack up faster for layering. Let's see here. Hey, Tanya. Yeah, I mean, if anyone wants to meet me in person, I'll definitely announce once the, um, you know, the uh, the school where I run open painting sessions opens up. But I, I really, I have no clue when that's going to happen, unfortunately. But it'll happen at some point. Now I want to differentiate between this tree and the background. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some of the atmosphere and paint it into the back just so that it recedes. And that's how we can get the effect of distance. Cheap, but effective. Let's 
Let's see if I missed anything. Hey, Chris, uh, what do you think about hyper-realistic paintings? I like hyper, um, you know, I like a, a little bit of everything, really. Um, hyper-realistic paintings are nice. I just, I don't really have the patience to paint, like, pixel, one pixel at a time. Instead, I tend to go for big shapes, big masses of color. But, I mean, I, I, I really admire uh, painters that do that, the uh, hyper-realistic paintings. Hey, Pablo. Oh, even if you're not allowed to sit for the painting. Well, you'd definitely, I mean, see the painting. You'd definitely be allowed to see the painting. And, again, if anyone is anywhere near the Maryland area, United States, definitely you're invited. Everyone is invited. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I must have missed that. Glenn Bennett had a question regarding online classes and time. Okay, so let me talk about the... Uh, thanks for pointing that out, Dondo. Um, I'm trying to read quickly here. Um, so the online classes are structured so that students have projects that they can work on. Each project has an associated playlist um, and playlists that only students can view. Um, and... In each playlist uh, contains the list of lessons in chronological order. For example, this one right here has an associated playlist that only online students can watch from beginning to end. This one has already about, I think, almost eight hours of footage in terms of online lessons. So you get the opportunity to paint at your own pace, and you have the ability as an online student uh, to send images to me each week by Saturday night, 11.59 p.m., to be featured in the virtual classroom. The virtual classrooms are released Tuesday evenings. Um, the virtual classrooms involve uh, basically me giving advice to students' images, uh, students' artwork, uh, their projects. Also, students have the ability to send original artworks once a month, um, for uh, to be in the virtual classroom as well. And um, again, it's only $10 a month, gets you access to all of the online lessons. And at $20 a month, you have the ability to watch the lessons filmed live. So for instance, this was filmed live this morning at 9 a.m. So this was filmed this morning at 9 a.m. This is about the, I think this was the ninth video or something uh, pertaining to this painting. $20 a month tier patrons saw the lesson created live and the lesson was posted to Patreon for every online student to see. So all of the $10 and uh, $20 a month students have the ability to see that lesson um, today. I posted it just right before uh, I started streaming. But of course, if you have any more questions, please feel free to ask. I will talk about it once in a while. And let me see, I must have missed a comment or two. Hey, D Michigan, I will go to meet you and then visit the National Museums. Yeah. You, we can do meet and greets at the museums too in the future. Yeah, who knows when the world will open up again. I'm sure it'll open up at some point. So someone, a nice username, has written, Can you please show the medium? Can you make a video about oil paintings for beginners? Um, so confused because of the color uh, cracking rule. Well, don't worry too much about oil paintings cracking anytime soon. But I can talk about oil, how um, you can transition into oil painting. It's a question I get quite frequently, and I can talk about it easily. Uh, hey Pablo, do you do less alla prima, or okay, did you do less alla prima before you started streaming? No, not necessarily. I did a lot of alla prima for uh, studies a lot, um, but yes, I am doing more alla prima now, and I'm uh, kind of refining my alla prima techniques now uh, for streaming. So thank you for noticing that. Actually, hey Barry, painting looks amazing. Oh, thank you. Uh, like a world, uh, uh, like a world made out of kitten fur. <laughs> awesome, thanks. Hey, Steven, I'm exactly 3,699 miles away from Maryland. No worries. Um, 
you know, you can still follow along uh, with the, the videos. And, and who knows, maybe in the future I'll get to travel travel the world and teach workshops and, and meet everyone. I'm I'm always I always try to be very positive with the future. I believe that if you try hard enough for things and if you really put your heart and soul into it that you can accomplish them. Sometimes it just takes a while. Hey Naldia Garcia what is up? Welcome to the stream. Hey, Glenn. Uh, let's see. Hey, Glenn. Uh, no, no need to apologize. Feel free to ask me anything here. Uh, I want to inquire how much time uh, time would need you to think I need to commit. How much time you need to think or commit. Uh, busy work life slash mortgage. Well, the online classes, uh, Glenn, are designed. They're designed... Um, for you to follow at your own pace. So whether you're painting once a week or uh, once a month, you always have access to the online lessons um, at the $10 a month. Um, and don't feel like you'll be left behind. Just because I'm on, suppose I'm on lesson number like 300, students can still send me images from lesson number one. And you can begin with each project you would like as well. So um, it's really up to you. It's set at your own pace. I have students that are sending images once a month. I have students that are sending images each week. I have students that are sending multiple images each week. So it really, um, it's really up to you, Glenn. But we'd definitely love to have you in the online classes. Hey, Naldia, did I pick a name for the kitten? Not yet. When the painting is put for sale, then I will have to pick the name. But I will definitely go through the uh, suggestions. Hey Jack, um, how do you find photos? Uh, do you find photos easier than live models? No, photos are much harder for me just because they're uh, flattened. Whereas, think about it, when you're painting from a live model or when you're painting from life, it's like super, ultra, mega, giga, awesome, high definition versus a photograph, which will be what? Like 1080p or something like that? So hey Hector, I got my Cobra paints in the mail today. I just need to get some panels to take your classes. Awesome, man. Uh, congratulations on getting your uh, Cobra oil paints. They are uh, awesome. Hey, Pablo. I checked. I'm 4,711 miles away. Uh, looks like no free sitting for you. <laughs> no worries, man. Hopefully I can travel at some point in the future and teach workshops. That is my, you know, one of my dreams in life is to be able to travel, teach workshops, paint portraits, and have a camera crew with me and create videos. Um, that's one of my dreams in life, and I'll get there at some point. I'm 29 right now. Hopefully I'll get to that point before I'm, I'm like 50. But even if it takes me uh, nearly a lifetime to get there, I'm, I'm optimistic. So with trees, I want to make this very clear with trees, green trees. One thing that you want to watch out for is overdoing the light and shadow. Now, light and shadow is differentiated from here to here, here to here, here to here. But you have to make sure that the light on the green trees doesn't get too light. That can be a tendency. Hey, Glenn. Oh, yeah, no worries. You can take the lessons at your own pace. The online uh, classes are designed for everyone to take them at their own pace. And that's, again, that's why I have the, a playlist. So each project, once Project 2 ends, you'll have every single video in chronological order for you to follow along at your own pace. Hey, Barry. Hey, Jack. Yep, no problem. Hey, Lydia. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your kind words. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push these planes here. Remember landscapes? you got to think about planes. So you have to differentiate planes in terms of not only linear perspective, but um, atmospheric perspective. 
So things that are closer to you will get darker, they will also get cooler, and they will also get more saturated because they're closer to you. So now I'm going to make this darker and, sl yeah, slightly darker and more detailed. Not really more detailed, but just darker. Maybe we'll, maybe just maybe this, maybe this little bush needs a friend. Which, by the way, of course, I love Bob Ross. <laughs> Rest in peace, English. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's hard to speak properly, paint, and uh, try to sound somewhat coherent. But it's okay. I... I do my best. Let's see. Hey, Pablo. Oh, you thought I was 25? Now I'm a little older. Huh. Oh, thank you. Hey, Barry. What Cobra paint colors should I get? I can't find all of the correlating colors you use with normal oil paints. With Cobra, they have pretty much all of them except for um, Alizarin. So this one right here... Um, this would be Matter Lake with Cobra. But otherwise, they have pretty much all of the colors. And for Cadmium Red, um, you would have to get Pyrol Red. Unless they do have a Cadmium Red, I'm not entirely sure. Oh, no worries, Pablo, it's okay. I am notorious for butchering my native language, which is English. Let's see. Hey, Jack, do you wear uh, painting overalls or painting clothes, or are you just careful not to get it everywhere? Oh, man, if you only saw my studio, there is painting everywhere. I mean, this room where I paint, there is paint everywhere. Um, I, I just have some uh, basketball shorts and a Walmart T-shirt and uh, a Walmart hat. <laughs> to block the uh, light from my eyes. Alrighty, let me see. Uh, hey, Barry, I'll type the name out for you. It's uh, Matter Lake. So this is the color that you're going to have to get with Cobra to mimic a lizard and crimson. Matter Lake is what they call it. I don't think they have a lizard and crimson for some reason with Cobra. What they have is this one, Matter Lake. Uh, hello, Pablo. Oh, huh? I didn't notice the pa uh, Pablo Picasso reference. Oh, cool. Hey, Naldia, what made you select this picture? Just curious. Um, so what made me select this picture was actually the memory involved in it. So if anyone wants to um, listen to the memory involved in this, when the world started ending, you know, the pandemic started getting huge and everything, um, I was going on a walk with, um, by the way, this is in uh, uh, Manassas, Virginia, Manassas National Battleground, um, I was walking with my fiance, her sister, her sister's boyfriend, and their uh, dachshund. And I just randomly, I thought, man, this would be a really nice landscape. I really liked this path going into the distance. I liked the the layers, really. This one is a layer here, really close to us. This is a layer here, not as close to us, uh, but a little further away. And then this is another layer in the distance. So I really liked that aspect of this photo reference. Hey, Barry, no problem. Oh, yeah. Um, and Dondo has the uh, primary color set for Cobra Talons. Just know that Cobra takes a lot longer to dry. That's really the only con with Cobra. But it's not really a con at all. It can also be used as a uh, advantage. Uh, 
All right, let's start to paint that sky. I'm neglecting the sky. Um, I'm missing a brush. Oh no. Oh dear. I have lost a brush, which is something I do often. Oh, found it. So again, these are my favorite brushes ever. Um, my most favorite brush is um, Princeton Catalyst Polytip Bristle, but I'm actually gonna mix with palette knife first because I'm gonna need a lot of paint so ultramarine blue titanium white tiny bit of cadmium yellow yeah I can't forget this guy almost forgot about this guy but I remembered Hey Hector, can we use different water mixable uh, oil paint brands together? Yeah, you, yes, yes, you can. You can even use traditional oil paints and water mixables together. Um, but if you use too much of the traditional, then it is not water soluble anymore or water mixable. So now what I'm going to do is add a little bit of medium with the palette knife actually to thin the paint out. So hopefully that'll be enough. Hey Barry, I just found I had one. I had one all along. I bought a bunch of randomly. Do you just use the artist version of Cobra? Um, I do for the most part. I don't think that they have different versions. I didn't know that they did have different versions, but uh, I highly recommend the brand Cobra in general. Whichever paint it is, Cobra for water mixable is definitely one of the one of the best in my opinion. Now I'm going to put a little bit of Gamsol on the brush. Now a little bit of Gamsol goes a long way because uh, it is a odorless mineral spirit. It is a petroleum distillate, so it will have the tendency to kind of eat at the paint. Which is something I'm very cautious of. Look at that. I already ran out of my color that I mixed here. So. Let us mix some more. Oh yeah. No worries uh, Barry. Yeah you can use that one too. Especially with the classical approach. You, you, can, you can use those. No worries. Hey Naldia, do I have a preference in terms of painting surfaces? Actually, definitely uh, with um, Project 2, the beginning of Project 2, um, again, the beginning of this uh, painting that we're currently working on, the beginning of that one was actually a materials video where I introduced my uh, suggested materials for the classes or for the um, that project in particular, but... My favorite surface is not cotton canvas. My favorite surface is actually um, panels. I like to paint on ampersand, gesso board, uh, museum series, which are not that expensive actually, unless you buy the cradled ones, the ones with uh, the back, the backing on it. They're not that expensive. I'm using cotton canvas because um, I don't mind the texture. But if this were a portrait, um, then I would probably have used a panel. But there's nothing wrong with cotton canvas as you're seeing here. It works perfectly fine. Especially if you put a layer of oil paint. Um, so for instance, I oil toned this. Actually, I have to move the photo reference a little bit now for you. Isn't that cool? I can do this on live, uh, live YouTube video. Power of technology when it works. See how the paint is resisting a little bit? Um, not, no, not so much resisting, but it's being absorbed really quickly. Um, and that is a thing that I enjoy. I like really um, absorbent surfaces. And uh, that's something you get from uh, high quality surfaces. But you can do that also... Uh, you can increase the absorbency by oil toning 
your paintings or your painting surfaces. And I'm kind of scrubbing the paint on just so uh, you know I don't have to paint a lot at a time. If I was doing this, I'd be painting a lot, uh, putting a lot of paint at once, which I don't want to do just yet. Um, let me see here. What have I missed? Hey, Barry. Uh, I found the Matter Lake to be clear. It's amazing. Uh, I get to chat with one of my... Uh, oh, <laughs> thank you so much. I'm very uh, humbled. And uh, please, Barry, feel free to ask me anything during the the live, uh, the virtual painting session. Again, all of all of you here, um, even the ones that aren't, you know, uh, typing or anything, I sense your presence. I feel your presence. Everyone here is what makes these streams so awesome. So I'm very appreciative of all of you here. This almost kind of reminds me of uh, Bob Ross. He would always start off with the skies, and he would actually use cross hatches and then let the tone of the canvas itself be the clouds. We're going to deliberately paint the clouds in. Hey, Griox, uh, do you draw something with colored, uh, colored pencils before? Okay, before, like, artists. I'm trying to... Hmm. I used to use colored pencils, uh, not so much colored pencils, I, I used to use um, pastel pencils in the past, but way, way in the past when I first started. And I still like to actually draw with a pastel pencil. I like to draw with a burnt umber pastel pencil. So now what I'm going to do is put some depth in the sky. So I'm going to make the top corners here uh, more... Uh, blue. I'm going to push the ultramarine, and you see this on a lot. It, this is kind of a cheap trick, but I like to I like to do this with landscapes. This is a uh, trickery in landscape. So painting the top darker to pull the eye closer towards the middle, and this is a great selling point for oil paintings. If you can get the viewer's attention, you know, doing tricks like this, even though I consider this kind of a cheap. Hey, Pam. Oh, no worries. Welcome to the live stream. Yep, you're in time for the clouds, but we're d I'm definitely going to go and put more planes in here. This has just been roughly stated. And maybe you'll see exactly how oily Winsor Newton can be. Wow, that that's like super oily which I'm going to use to my advantage um, because it will actually help the paint spread much more quickly. Hey Barry, do you make your own canvases and if so, do you use cotton or linen? I uh, don't quite have the budget to buy large linen rolls. If I did, I would. But I do stretch my own. Um, I buy them already primed, but I add more prime, primer. Do you see the staples uh, here? See how they're not so evenly spaced? See the back? Um, I did stretch this canvas myself. So I, I do like to stretch my canvases. Which, by the way... Um, all of these paintings will uh, be for sale on my Etsy, the uh, virtual painting session paintings. For instance, hopefully the kitty finds a new home, uh, finds a forever home. The, uh, the kitty that was painted last time, the still lives, I will put them all on Etsy. Once they are touch dry and then I apply the gem bar uh, varnish. So adding a little bit of depth, a little more depth into the into the sky. Let's see, even over here. And you can actually do this uh, and draw clouds by leaving, see this? I can actually use this and draw a cloud. 
if I really wanted to. And um, ultramarine blue green shade, I actually like to use it for sky blue colors as well. Which is the Winsor Newton color that I'm using. So now let's put in the dark clouds, the darker shapes for the clouds. I'm going to start off with um, ivory black. Now we're going to paint the slight overcast. So ivory black, I'm going to steer clear from this entire section. Oh wait, sorry, you can't see it. <laughs> I'm going to stay clear from this entire section of the palette and only going to use ivory black. Uh, sap green and ultramarine blue and titanium white which I have to add more of actually so again please feel to ask me anything during the streams don't feel like you're gonna you know distract me or anything like that I enjoy um, everyone participating Um, you know, this is actually the time to introduce the crowd question that Steven mentioned. So crowd question coming up. I think this is uh, how you worded it or the question. Uh, let's see. Oh, what is your Etsy gallery under? Um, I did have a... Hmm, do I still have it? Uh, I'm taking a risk here. Yes, it's still there. Whew. Um so there, I, unfortunately, I can't point at it, but there is my only painting that's for sale right now. Uh, if you look up Upari Artist, uh, that is the uh, the title. So if you look up Upari Artist on Etsy, this painting is currently for sale. And the sales are first come, first serve basis. All of the paintings that I sell come with certificates of authenticity. I particularly am notorious for... Um, keeping track of where my paintings are, where they go. And I actually do dispose of paintings that I know I won't sell. So I currently have only, I think, about 10 or 20 paintings of my own. The rest have been disposed of. The ones that um, I knew I wouldn't sell. So let's see here. Hey, Barry. I don't have this uh, Etsy link in the... Oh. Um, yeah, I would... Unfortunately, I don't think I have the Etsy link there. Let me see if I can find it somewhere. Huh. No, I don't have it. If somebody wants to find my Etsy and link it... Oh, wow, Dondo's ahead of us. Alrighty, Dondo. Shout out to Dondo, buddy. Thank you. There is the link to my Etsy store. Um, yes, I, I messed up. I didn't put it in the description. So I'm testing out a small portion for the cloud. I'm going to actually move the photo reference yet again since we're painting... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Since we're painting one cloud right now. I'm going to start off... I'm going to start off with this cloud... So yes, all of the paintings that I sell come with certificates of authenticity with matching signatures. So uh, you know that the painting is original and attributed to me. And yes, I will be selling art prints once I figure out how to do that. Um, I will be selling art prints of the uh, paintings. Definitely need a little more blue. That cloud is a little too green. So ultramarine blue, titanium white. And uh, let me know if you want to see that painting in person, the one that I showed the picture of, because I, all I have to do is just stand up and move about eight feet behind me to pick up that painting. So if anyone wants to see the painting that's currently for sale, I can put it here so you can see it in person in terms of, you know, the live stream. Now, 
Now I'm going to get some of the light color for the clouds. So even clouds have top planes, side planes, and under, under planes. Alrighty, let me see here. Hey, para, para minder. When I paint clouds on the sky, it gets all muddy and not so good. So I, w I wait for it to dry and then draw the clouds. Um, yeah, you can do it that way. Or, um, you know, oftentimes what will make a cloud look uh, quote-unquote muddy is n not keeping the paint mixtures clean. So I switched brushes right away, if anyone noticed, when I started painting the clouds. I switched brushes like quickly um like shifting gears in a car which by the way um i always prefer stick shift cars but in any case um shout out to those of you that like to drive manual cars like me um i switch brushes and stay away from warm colors for clouds you can easily use just ivory black ultramarine blue and titanium white for clouds Clouds usually won't be that warm in terms of their hues. So when I was in trouble of it getting too orange or too green, uh, it would have become muddy if I didn't put more titanium white and ultramarine blue. But yes, you can wait for it to dry. But with clouds, just like with anything else in nature, you want to be careful of repetition. You don't want to impose symmetry onto the clouds. So you have to be very deliberate for where you place the clouds. As you can see, I'm actually slowing down quite a bit with the clouds. Oh yeah, the crowd question. Um, so Steven's question here, awesome question, um, is which technique of painting would you like to master? And I'm going to start with mine. All right. So which techniques would you like to master? And my answer is that one, all of them. I want to master all of the techniques. And um, techniques involve classical, uh, alla prima, abstract, surrealism. You can even differentiate between landscape and figurative. But which type of painting techniques would you yourself like to master? And I hope I got your question right, Stephen, unless I butchered it. I apologize if I messed it up. Now we're going to put this big old cloud. I'm actually going to have to move the photo reference. I don't know where I'm going to put it. I'm running out of space to put the photo reference. I want to put it over here for now. Don't mind me. I just want you to be able to see the cloud that I'm going to paint, which is this one now. All 
Hidondo, portraiture, half tones, and planes. Well, I've definitely got you. And you're doing great, Dondo, with that, with your portraiture. And for those of you emailing right, me right now, I'll get to the emails um, after the stream. And again, remember the clouds have planes, so there's going to be a much darker plane. over here Whoops, that was way too dark. Let's see. So Hector Plasm Caterscuro. I'm not so in love with uh I'm not so in love with dramatic yet uh, intimate feeling it gives to painting, but in general everything that has to do with portrait and figure. Yeah, definitely portraiture. In my online classes, I'm going to introduce um, um, not nude, but figure drawing that involves, um, you know, human proportions and, uh, you know, how to draw a, a model uh, from head to toes, of course, wearing clothing. Because we can't do figure drawing in the traditional sense on the internet. It's just one of those things that you can't really do. Let's see. Hey, Pam. Uh, I was amazed by some artists' paintings uh, paintings done in verdaccio, which I like to learn, which I believe that means uh, green underpainting. I think that's what you mean, Pam, unless I'm, I'm off. Yeah, Don, don't no worries. You can take the classes at your own pace. Definitely. Hey, Holden. Welcome to the live streams. I need to add some complimentary color to the blue I'm using to neutralize the cloud shadows. I'm a little cautious with that one, um, especially with the clouds. Um, perhaps if this was wet over dry... But I, I know what you mean to push some of the um, the uh, nuance and the color temperature for the clouds. Thanks for your suggestions. I'll see what I can do. Uh, but I want to get those values correct first. Hey, Barry. Uh, do I watch any other uh, painters on YouTube? Um, uh, I'm in trouble with this one. Actually, I... I messed this one up before because I do. I do actually watch one YouTube channel. Um, I actually re-watch these same videos a lot, especially when I'm painting. Um, if you look up again the school that I mentioned, Studio Incominati. I'm actually going to have to move that photo reference. If you look up Studio Incominati on uh, YouTube, they have um, live streams that they filmed in the past. Uh, they're about three to four, to, I think like four hours each. I think one of them is like six hours. I can't quite remember. But um, I, I do watch Studio Incominati's um, 
videos. And uh, if you go to Studio Incominati's uh, YouTube channel, please give them a uh, shout out. Tell them that you probably sent you. Just so they know I still exist and that I really appreciate everything I learned there. Let's see, what have I missed? Oh, thanks, Holden. Oh, I got it right, Steven. Variety for you is important. Awesome. Hey, uh, Barry, I'll type out the name for you. Unless, does, does somebody want to type out uh, Studio on Kaminati? Or better yet, does somebody want to uh, put their YouTube channel link on the chat for Barry? If not, I'll just type it out for you. All right, I'm going to count down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, I'm going to type it out for you. Alrighty, so I've typed it out for you, Barry. Um, let's see, show up, show up, show up, come on. Internet is lagging. There you go. Studio Incominati. Um, unfortunately, I can't really access uh, the internet other than my live stream, but if you look up Studio Incominati on YouTube, you will see their previous live streams, and please give them a good old shout-out from my behalf. Tell them that you probably sent you... Just so they know, I'm alive, and I still like to represent them. What did I just do? I just mixed my brushes. I try to keep my brushes separate um, between different tasks. So, dark cloud, light on the cloud. Let's see here. <laughs> Don, no, no worries, buddy. No worries. I know that there is a lag with the internet, so. I think about a minute passes from the time that uh, I do something or say something to the time it is broadcasted. Which, in all actuality, is, is pretty good for our technology. And just like with any subject, the fundamentals are universal, whether it's portraiture, still life, or landscape, or anything in between. Um, the fundamentals are the most important, meaning the fundamentals in terms of structure and value, in particular value, is the most important thing. Uh, right now, I am definitely prioritizing value over um, trying to say match colors i seldom try to match colors i look for values and relate values to one another and remember in the beginning i mentioned to group at least six different colors maybe i should say at the most but uh, uh six different values excuse me and once we have the sky covered i'll count them out and see how we did Hey Barry, yeah, there is a delay, um, but again, there's uh, that's just part of the stream. But if we think about it, I mean, ten seconds, and we're communicating over hundreds, if not sometimes thousands, of miles away, in only ten seconds. It's amazing. Hey, Hamed. Oh, thank you for the thumbs up. 
Hey, John. Uh, thank you. Which, by the way, everyone, we are now at uh, 91 likes. Uh, interesting. My birth date is 91. So if anyone is uh, hasn't hit uh, the like button, please like the video. Of course, if you like the video. If you don't like it, you don't have to like it. But uh, if you like the video, please give us uh, nine more likes so we can make it to 100 likes, if you don't mind. Hey Holden, you love watching uh, Fu Yan and Fu Dali paint uh, Asian father and son who live in Australia, mostly landscape and still live painters. Awesome, thank you for pointing that out. So here's another YouTube channel, the uh, other YouTube channels to check out for art. Thank you for pointing that out. Hey Steven, when I type a comment, it takes two minutes to appear on screen but you live 3,699 miles away. Oh, wow. Um, so 3,699 miles in two minutes. That is crazy. 3,699 miles. No, never mind. I was going to try to do some, some math, but forget it. I, I'm not going to try to do math and paint and stream and talk at the same time. All right, so what was I going to say? So remember I mentioned about six different values. So this is going to be one major value zone. So this is one. Two would be the masses for the green. Three would be both the grouping of the sky and this area here. So those are three major values that are subdivided into two so six major values and you can group your values together um, and get more of the effect of um, illusion if you paint in more planes than what I'm painting you can make it look even more realistic um, but the important thing with landscape is actually um, value it's a very very important uh, to be able to group your values Hey Barry, uh, do you use specific light, uh, uh, specific Kelvin lighting uh, for the painting? Uh, I use a cool light and a warm light. I have a cool photography light and I have a LED light that's variable that I set to a warmer color. So I kind of have a mix there. I'm not sure about the Kelvin rating. Hey Holden, uh, they post videos of them painting whole paintings, but they speed it up time lapse. You can slow uh, slow the speed with them and paint with them in real time. Awesome. Cool. Alrighty, so now I'm going to start to put more texture into the grass. The dead grass, but still grass. So see, I'm going to refer to the puddle that I had for the grass before. Make it a little darker. A little bit warmer. And now we're going to get the effect of things closer to us. Tiny bit of red, and that's Windsor Red. And again, I'm using it just because it's not as bright.
So it's a little too green, some of the colors that I've painted here. So I'm just going back and forth trying to get different textures. You'll also see more detail of things that are closer to you. Well, I guess that's a really obvious thing to point out, but I guess it should be mentioned. <laughs> hey, Barry, maybe it needs a crop circle as a twist. <laughs> a crop circle and then a UFO in the sky. I tell you what. Oh, thank you so much. We're at 103 likes. If we make it up to a hundred and a hundred and seventy likes, I'll paint a UFO in the sky. If we make it up to a hundred and seventy. So if anyone wants to see me put a UFO in the sky, please like the stream. And we'll paint you a UFO. What did I say that number was? I think 170. Hey Steven, if you only had cadmium red, how would I tone it down? Okay, that's a good question. If I only had cadmium red, I would immediately go for an umber, either raw umber or burnt umber to tone it down, to bring down the saturation of the red. And that would create something closer to a Venetian red. Remember things that are closer to you get darker, so I'm trying to push the value a little bit. 117, Barry, I said 170. If we can get 170 likes, I'll paint a UFO. Maybe that's unrealistic. Uh, let me see, where are we now? We're still at 107. <laughs> I guess nobody wants the UFO. All right, I'm going to change it. I don't think 170 is realistic for me. So if we get about 117 likes, as, as Barry said, if we get 117 likes, I'll paint the UFO. Just to make this more fun. So if we get 117 likes, I'll paint a UFO somewhere over here. Why? Because we can. Putting more detail here. I may put in these these trees, but I don't know. I feel like the tree competes too much with this grouping that I have here. So I'm just putting in more planes. Oh yeah, Steven, I would also use uh, sap green if I really wanted to uh, cool or neutralize a red. If all I had was cadmium red. So first I'd probably neutralize it with um, one of the umbers, and then if I really wanted to bring it down, I would use uh, sap green. Hey John, uh, what did I miss here? You want to see the UFO at 115? I said, oh, hey, thank you so much, T. Uh, T. Horn. Oh, I'm glad that you're enjoying the live streams. Well, thank you so much. Hey, Harjot, you can't comment on... No, I didn't block you, buddy. Um, yeah, uh, if if Harjot is blocked for some reason, let's unblock Harjot. He's, he's, he's one of my buddies. 
Um, you're all m my friends, really. But thank you so much, uh, T, T. Hong, uh, for your donation to the YouTube channel. It really, really helps me out so much. And um, again, as a reward, uh, T. T. Hong, if you are interested, please email me. I'm going to type my email right now. And I will send you a, a high-resolution image of one of my paintings. I'm going to type out my Gmail right now. So there is my Gmail, uh, Ti Huang. Uh, if you really enjoy these videos um, and these live streams, which of course you clearly do, thank you so much for, for donating. Sorry, my words are getting mixed up. But please feel free to email me if you're interested in a uh, high-resolution image of this painting that's actually for sale at the moment. I can send you a high-resolution image of this painting, um, not at the print quality because I have to withhold that for art prints, but I can send you a high-resolution image of this painting that is currently for sale as a reward for your super chat. Hey, Arcadian Art. Oh, I'm glad that you like the uh, kitten kitten painting. Well, look at that. We're at 114. So if we get three more likes, if I can do my math properly, I will paint a UFO. Three more likes, and we'll paint a UFO. Because I, I think 170 was a little too unrealistic. Hey, Bruno. Yeah, we're close. We're so close. Hey, Tu Hong. Okay, I've got your your uh, email. So don't worry, I will send you the high-resolution image of that uh, painting that's currently for sale. As soon as the stream ends, I'll get right to the Gmail and send it to you. And again, thank you so much for your donation. Did we really? Oh, wow, we made it to one, 117. Okay, all right. We're going to paint a UFO. What's up? All righty. UFO. We're going to paint E.T.'s space shuttle or spaceship or whatever. Uh, mm, in terms of composition, where does it go? Where does it go? Yay, we did it. If I had the confetti, I would... Whew, confetti. Yay, 117. Oh, uh, no, I won't cancel the UFO. We've made it. Um, If I put the UFO here, it may make this area too busy. So mm, I'm going to put the UFO here. So right over here, I'm going to paint the UFO. So of course I need a new uh, clean brush to do that. Oh yeah, UFO time. What is that? Um, that like, let me, let me think. Was it like X-Files? <laughs> We're going to get crazy and paint a UFO. All right, so I'm starting off with ivory black because since the UFO is in the distance, it's going to appear really cool. Uh, oh, behind the tree? <laughs> UFO beaming up a cow. <laughs> uh, that might be a little too too much for, for this painting. I, I think a spaceship will be good. A flying saucer spaceship. You think behind the trees? Golden ratio UFO. I'm going to definitely paint a flying saucer. Has anyone seen a UFO? My mother actually told me she saw a UFO in Peru once when she was young. But no, I I haven't seen a UFO. That's a good question. Has anyone seen a UFO? <laughs> Trust no one. <laughs> All right, so I'm starting with Ivory Black. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to put the UFO close to the trees just because of the composition. I usually like to have diagonals, so I think that the UFO here would go with the composition. So a little bit of Venetian medium for the UFO. I'm going to thin out the paint with the Gamsol. Uh, 
Oh, a channel your inner. Okay, awesome. All right, let's do this. I think right here, above here. And at a slight angle. Because you know those pictures that you always see of, uh, of UFOs, those metallic discs? So, of course, it's going to have to be round. And you have to consider the light is going to be hitting the UFO. So we're going to paint a top plane for the UFO really quickly. Let's hope this helps to sell the painting. Let's cr keep our fingers crossed that this will help to sell the painting. <laughs> Classical saucer shape. Yeah, I'm going to go for the saucer shape. Hey, uh, E. E. Berto, what's up? Oh, you saw a UFO once? Awesome. Tell us about your experience. I've always wanted to see a UFO. Oh, Stephen, you've seen the Northern Lights. Tell you what, fun fact, when I was in, in uh, school, my uh, degree was in math. In particular, I paid a lot of attention in uh, physics to figure out, like, what, <laughs> to try to figure out, like, uh, what my little brain could understand in terms of uh, how these flying saucers would fly. And my opinion is, you know how UFOs usually go in 90s? People say that they go in 90 degrees. I think that they warp the space-time manifold. So that about the time that you see a UFO, it is in the past. So I feel like it distorts the space around it to move. And um, that's my theory, that it distorts the space-time manifold so that you think that it's making a 90 really quickly but in fact it's distorting space so it's the distortion of space that makes the ufo appear to move extremely fast but our time and the ufo's time would be different in terms of um i guess general relativity if you think of the curvature of space as being the uh you know the cause of gravity i don't know that's my theory so the flying saucer now has a little highlight and we're going to give the flying saucer some little glowing lights because I, they've been described a lot to have glowing lights in the bottom. Hey, Barbara. Yeah, I don't think I'll paint over the flying saucer. I think the flying saucer is definitely going to make the composition. Crop circles? Uh, will, will food? Yeah, we could put a... I guess it would make sense to put a crop circle here. Let's do it. Let's do it. Actually... I'm being too lenient. We're at 120. If we get 125, I'll paint the crop circle. <laughs> if we get 125 likes, I'll paint the crop circle. Yeah, of course, uh, Charles, this will definitely be for sale. All right, so someone keep an eye on the likes. If we get 125, I'll put a crop circle over here with highlights and everything. Speaking of highlights, this should have one central highlight. And now some other smaller highlights for the round part of the saucer. So the usual disc shape that we all see in the sky. <laughs> yeah, perfect landscape for UFO center of interest, yeah. Hey, John, it could end up being surrealist, but as long as we follow the basic, uh, I guess that is surrealism by definition, but I'm going to do my best to make it um, a realistic interpretation of a, UFO in the sky. So I want just a little bit of the sky blue to show underneath because there would be some kind of reflected light underneath of the saucer. 
And now we're going to paint in the... Um, now we're going to paint the fusion drive that everyone says that UFOs have in the center. The fusion drive or antimatter drive or something like that. Which is going to have highlights. Oh, we're at 127. Okay, alrighty. You definitely want the crop circles. Alright, let's do it. Let's do it. Crop circles time. So I'm going to get the same brush that I was using for these planes here. And now we're going to put the crop circle. If I put the crop circle, the painting needs to be auctioned. That's a good idea. That's a good idea, Don, though. I might, uh, I might take you up on that. We can definitely auction them during the live streams. Is anyone interested in that? I can auction the paintings during the live streams. The UFO, uh, this UFO is like a magnet. All right, we're going to put some lights underneath of it. It's not complete, but we're going to make it more like a disc. So I want something that's slightly warm. And of course, the UFO would appear larger over here. So we're just going to put in a slight round. And I, again, I think it needs to go here because every landscape and every composition needs some area to be, um, you know, uh, like easy for the eye to see so here and maybe here so now I'm going to start to put in the silhouette of the uh, disc shape object here you know how they say the UFOs usually burn a center for the crop circle for those of you that have asked if I've ever painted anything from imagination you're now seeing it live I like to have fun when I'm painting, so this is these are things that I do. I was kind of known at Studio and Kamenati to do things like this. I would always add some kind of comical thing to uh, to a still life. Let's see, let's see, what have I missed? Hey Charles, almost looks like the spaceship in Flight of the Navigator. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, we're going to put the anti-gravity drive soon, Dondo. Hey, Fred. What is up? Welcome to the stream. Alrighty. Sci-fi art. Art may be a new career path. Could be. Could be. All right. So let's add the highlights. Actually, these are more middle lights to the crop circle. These are the highlights. And don't worry, we'll get to the the structure, the structural aspect in the trees and everything soon. Now you're seeing the disc shaped disruption in the foreground. Hey Hector. It has gone from a country li a countryside landscape to seeing a uh, science fiction magazine cover very quickly. <laughs> oh, thank you. Hey, Charles. Would the flying saucer cast any type of shadow onto the ground? Well, if we're following the traditional theory um, that it is warping space-time, then if it is warping space-time, then the cast shadow that would be casted from this would actually not apply because you're seeing it at a different place, at a different time, relative to the flying saucer itself. But we can put some kind of shadow in there. Now I'm going to start to put in some more details. Um, let's just use, ah, change brushes, change brushes. Put in some more details for the, uh, the toasted areas, the, the areas that are burnt up from radiation for the flying saucer. Of course it would be darker because it got burned by the radiation. The, U the UFO decided to land here and uh, maybe abduct a cow and then leave abruptly.
I'm actually going to try to scratch in some of the... Whoops. i clean off the old palette knife. I'm going to try to scratch in some lights. At least that's my interpretation of the crop circle. Let's see here. <laughs> the circles have to be to the golden rule. Uh, one, uh, one sixty-eighth. <laughs> hey Barry, I think uh, I think it's too far. <laughs> the never too far. Unless you think that this is too far to the right. And um, also take note that I'm not making the crop circle obvious either. In terms of the value. I'm not going to make it too dark. So if anything, this is going to be kind of how to make things up in landscapes. There, there's always something to take out of this. So don't think I'm just, you know, goofing around. I am thinking of planes and structure. Oh yeah, it is a UFO. Welcome back to the, the live stream. So you know what I did? I waited. I um, asked everyone if we got 117 likes, I would paint a UFO. And then if we got 100, I think, what was it, 125, I would paint a crop circle. So we have a crop circle in progress and a UFO in progress. So yeah, we have a UFO. Uh, let's see here, Mr. Piano Lee. It will have a shadow. It's just in hover mode at the moment. It has warp. It's a uh, warp drive that Ben space time is offline in the picture. <laughs> awesome logic. Yes, I see that. Well, okay. If we want to put a shadow, a cast shadow. I guess the cast shadow would be. See, if I'm following the direction of the light. Again, this is like high noon, so. The shadow would probably be casted around here. So that would be the shadow casted from this. And let's just for fun just put in a super bright highlight. To that UFO, even though I don't think it picks up on camera. Oh yeah, thanks everyone for the likes. Now let's start to add the fusion reactor for the UFO. And again, I mean, I know it seems like I'm not taking it seriously, but I am. I am thinking of, um, you know, if this was a fusion reactor, yes, it would be extremely saturated, so I can go in with the bright red. See, that red is not bright enough. I'm going to clean off the brush again, and I'm going to... For the fusion reactor, I would have to have a bright red that's even stronger than Windsor. So we're gonna throw out the whoops. Uh, we're gonna throw out the uh, or put in the cadmium red vermilion old Holland. We need old Holland here, old old Holland for the uh, bright red. I'm gonna use the rear end of the brush. Now that is giving us a bright red. Ah, wrong red. There you go. Now we're starting to get the fusion reactor. Oh, thanks Bar uh, Barry, I'm glad you like the crop circle. And again, I tried not to make it too obvious. Obviously, I didn't make it as dark as this. Now let's put in the bright cadmium yellow for the fusion reactor. Does everyone know what fusion is? It's when you heat... Well, I don't know. Somebody wants to put in the, the uh, definition. From my understanding, fusion is when you heat up a uh, substance to uh, such a high temperature that the uh, atoms fuse together and that tr produces energy and that energy uh, is what powers the stars nuclear fusion not fission but fusion 
But if I got the science wrong, please correct me. Thanks, Tondo. So I'm going with yellow and red because those are the colors I would think of uh, if something is heated to such a high temperature that it achieves fusion. But people also say that UFOs could also run on antimatter, which I, I don't really know too much about antimatter or dark matter. Now I'm going to add a little more contrast to the outer edge of the UFO. Then we'll get back to the, to the landscape, or the, the rest of the landscape. So the UFO needs a dark light to distinguish between the top plane of the UFO and the under plane. So this must, hopefully this will answer the question of do I ever paint anything from imagination. <laughs> oh, thanks, Charles. This is a great pre-Halloween treat. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun for Halloween. And a side plane to the top dome of the UFO up here at least that's what I think of when someone mentions a flying saucer or some kind of UFO so hopefully this will help to sell the painting. And also I want to make prints of all of these paintings as well. So even if this is sold at some point, don't worry. We'll have some art prints. Okay, all right. So now that we have the UFO. Hey, Steven. Oh, thank you. I did a landscape last year and put a TARDIS, tar uh, TARDIS in it. Doctor Who. Oh, I, I haven't seen Doctor Who, but I've heard of it. Thanks for the hand wave, uh, little Miss uh, Daisha. Wait a minute. Daisha. I know a Daisha. Is this the Daisha that I've met before? But in any case, uh, if this is your first time in one of my live streams, Please uh, let us know, and I will give you a shout out with a paintbrush. All right, let's start to put in some more structure into the trees. So I actually have a ton of brushes out, so I have quite the selection. So I'm going to use this one. And again, I don't use very expensive brushes. This is um, these are just brushes from Michaels. I get the forty percent off. And I'm good to go. I'm sorry that it's kind of in shadow, but that's just the way that the the framing is. Wow, Daisha, you're here. What's up? I'm glad you like the uh, the live streams. Oh wow, everyone, shout out to Daisha. Does anyone remember the model named Daisha that I've painted before several times? Specifically back in the Daily Upari times. Yeah, that is Daisha right here. How are you doing, Daisha? I hope you've you've been well, despite the world having uh, ended abruptly. I, I hope that you're doing well. I miss painting you, Daisha. You're one of my favorite models to paint. Don't tell the other models that, but you're one of my favorite models to paint. 
Hey, Charles. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're talking about Doctor Who. Yeah, I haven't seen Doctor Who. Hey, three peas in a pod. And, and Daisha, three peas in a pod. Uh, shout out to you. Uh, welcome to the live stream. I hope that you are enjoying the live stream. And again, shout out to you, to you, Daisha, as well. So shout out to both of you. And anyone that's new to the live streams, please feel free to comment and have your name here. And I'll give you a shout out with the paintbrush. Hey, Steven. Oh, you do remember Daisha. See, Daisha, you're such a great model. Man, I really miss painting models from life. Yeah, Daisha is the most reliable model I've ever had. Oh, thanks, Daisha. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm surviving here. I'm surviving. I went to, um, I went to a sit-down restaurant for the first time with my family in a long time. Actually, my favorite restaurant, uh, sushi restaurant, just uh, yesterday, actually. So we're hanging in there. Oh yeah, Daisha, I'm I'm engaged now by the way. I don't think I told you that. So I'm I'm engaged to Lucy. Now well, that's some news since the last time I've painted you. Hope everything's been going well for you, Daisha. I hope to be able to paint you at some point in the future. I know we're probably kind of far away. Yep, thanks, Daisha. Yep, we are engaged. I proposed in July. I planned it out and everything. I had my cousins and my uncles. We did a fake birthday party for one of my cousins. Um... We did a fake birthday party, and then the cake had the question on it, and I turned around and um, had the ring and everything. It was a lot of fun. Hey, Mr. Piano, when you painted your mother-in-law to be from life... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was definitely a, a scary thing, yeah. Very scary. Just putting in more definition into the tree. Oh, thanks, Steven. A little more intricacy to these trees. Now I'm really spending my time with the trees. Trying to delineate these. Hey, Daisha. Have I ever painted my fiance? Yeah, she's um I painted her a couple times on YouTube in the early days, but um she doesn't <laughs> she doesn't really like to to sit, but she also posed for me at the uh, uh for the portrait painting group, the same group that I um painted you in in, in Howard County. So I've painted her a few times. Oh wow, you've been living in 
in Vietnam for most of the year. Awesome and traveling. Yeah, I would like to do some traveling once the uh, the world opens up again. In particular, like I said, I want to travel and teach workshops. Yep, yeah, uh, they should. I've painted her a long time ago. Um, I can't quite remember when. I think the last time was probably uh, two summers ago. So a little more refinement for the trees and then I gotta go back and add more of the texture of the grass. Yep, that is what I want to do, uh, day show when I get to travel. Also, anyone watching this live that has any connections to um, art schools, definitely uh, let me know. Email me if they would like me to, in the future, teach a workshop there. Or who knows, I can even do these um, live streams in, in different school settings and, um, you know, have, like, guest audiences and things. I don't know. All right, now I'm going to put the details in the grass, and I'm going to see if I can get away with the palette knife, scratching in with the palette knife. I'm not going to do this everywhere, but where I want some, like, random tall grass. Man, this is one of the things I really, uh, I really love about landscape is that we can do things like this in this a little crop circle. Oh, thanks, Dondo. No, her name is Lucy. <laughs> You're gonna get me in trouble. Uh, no, her name is Lucy, my my fiance. You know, like I I love Lucy the show. I'm just scratching in the little individual hairs. Oh, thanks, Daisha. Yep, that is my Gmail. Did I miss something? I think I might have missed something. Oh, thanks, on Rio. Thanks for the the emojis. There's some awesome emojis to have there. And I, I'm sorry that the chat, I had to make the chat so small just so it could fit in that corner. Because, uh, of course, the landscape takes up a lot of space there. Let's see. Hey, John, how many likes do you need to paint a mask? A mask in the bushes? What do you mean a mask? I don't. You mean like a face in the bushes? Now this is going to start to become surreal. You mean like a face, John? A face in the bushes? Like a smiley face in here? I don't know. <laughs> no worries, Charles. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, my my fiance is really the the one that motivated me to pursue art once again in the future. Because when when I met her, it was during the time where I didn't know what I was doing with my life. So she really... Um, motivated me to start doing what I love again, which is like what I think uh, five years and some months ago, five months and I think uh, no five years and three months ago. 
Hey, that's starting to look kind of realistic now. No scratching with the palette knife. So I guess I'll just keep doing that. Keep scratching here with the palette knife. Oh, no worries, Dondo, no worries. Hey, Barry. I guess a blue face mask. Oh, a face mask. In the trees? A face mask in the trees? I don't know. Maybe. A face mask in the trees? I'm confused. Hey, Daisha. Yeah, she did lead me uh, back to me. Yeah. Yeah, she definitely helped me get the motivation to pick up painting again. When I met her, I was a math tutor. I mean, I still enjoy math, but my, um, you know, painting has always been in my soul. And I've always wanted to make videos such as these. I never really dreamed I'd be able to get to this point with uh, YouTube. I'm really fortunate. Hey Dondo, we're at uh, 139 likes. Okay, awesome. You're seriously laughing about the mask. I'm confused. Do you mean like the face mask that we always wear or like put a face in the trees? And if so, I'm going to make that at 170. <laughs> I want to see if we get 170 likes. I will put either the mask, if you want, in one of the trees or an actual face in the trees. Somebody, somebody clarify it to me because I'm lost. A mask? Like an actual face mask or a face? I'm confused. But before I forget, um, a little tip. Whenever you're scratching in details to a painting, it lifts up paint. So that's when you want to combine it with a fan brush. So it's not visible to the screen, but I'm just patting down the texture so that it doesn't um, show too much. Well, this is definitely one of the the most the fun live streams yet. Oh yeah, uh, okay, a Corona mask. All right, okay, I'm gonna make it a little, a little more ambitious. If we get up to, um, I'm gonna say, a hundred fifty nine. If we get up to a hundred fifty nine, I'll put a face mask. A corona face mask in one of the trees but it would be a giant mask and this will definitely be a surrealist painting at that point and I would put it on hmm, not any of these two because they're way too focal uh, they're too much of a focal point to put the mask. So I would sneak in the face mask here. So it would be like a blue V type of shape. But I'm making it steep. 159 equals the mask. Because I don't know how that's going to go. I think that's not going to help sell the painting. But I like the idea of the uh, auction. Somebody mentioned an auction. We could do an auction, like a live painting slash auction one of these days. If anyone's interested in that. But of course I wouldn't start the auction at zero. I would probably start the auction at about maybe half the price that the painting is. I don't know. I'd have to think about that. <laughs> well, what? The trees? Oh, I don't know about that. 
All right, I'm starting to put more planes into this, and I'm edges now, edges. So where's the sharpest edge? And the sharpest edge would be at the focal point because the landscape needs a focal point here. Super sharp edge. Hey, dog G. Yep, that is a UFO. Hey, Charles, how do I uh, price my art? I use a normalized curve. So, for instance, I go by the size of the painting. So, for instance, the square area of the painting. And then I'll have a coefficient. So, my coefficient would be perhaps, I think, uh, $2.70, I think, per square inch. So, then it would be 11 times 14 times the square inch, and then times whatever the normalized curve would be. So, for instance, the bigger the painting gets, um, the less that coefficient becomes. So, if it's a smaller painting, such as this one, so this one is currently for sale, it's my only painting for sale, the uh, coefficient is higher on the smaller paintings, um, but that is just so that the prices are uniform. I don't want to randomly price the paintings. So I price them by the size. So that is roughly priced at, uh, it, it gets more expensive the bigger the painting is. See that? How it helps to build a focal point. Hey Doug, Oh, thank you. About time someone <laughs> paints a UFO in their landscape. I swear I saw that UFO. It was there. It was there. Oh, you know, John, that makes more sense. But I guess that would kind of promote littering if I put a, a mask over here. I think what everyone wants is a mask on a tree. Which is very creative, by the way. I would have never thought of that. Now I'm going to change up the hue here a little bit because, as you're noticing in the photo reference, uh, there are different areas or zones in the landscape, which we already have kind of over here, but I want to emphasize it a little more. Yeah, a subtle mask. Yeah, that could work. Man, like I said in the beginning of the stream, all of you, let me not point let me not point at you with a knife, but all of you sitting there, yes you. I'm talking to you right there. Uh watching the live stream, interacting with us. You are what makes these live streams awesome. You make these live streams amazing. Thank thank you all so much. Let's see here. Let's see. What did I miss? Hey, Doug. I saw uh, three with my buddy at his family's farm. Three UFOs. Wow. I wish I could even see one. Hey, Charles. How about an alien wearing a mask? <laughs> Look at the creativity here. An alien wearing a face mask. But see, wouldn't the alien have the technology to be immune from all ailments, I think? I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, I can see that. Hey, Doug. Oh, okay. Um, I hope you're okay. <laughs> yes, mask on the alien day show. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. So day show. I mean, if you're if you're free around this time, um, I usually do these streams on. Uh, Mondays and Wednesdays, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays, um, usually around 5 p.m. day show. So if you want to tune into future ones, and sometimes I'll do some streams in the middle. And everyone has suggested I start a Twitch, so I think I'm going to start a Twitch for charcoal drawing. Fun times, man. Oh, yep, yeah, thanks everyone that's leaving a like. Yep, I understand, Doug. I tell you what, when this began, man, I had the worst flu ever. Not when this began, but right before this began, around September, 
I had the worst flu of my life. And then Corona happened, like, around March over here. All right, so everyone, if we get to 159 likes, I'll paint you a, a face mask in this tree. A distant face mask. A huge face ma mask, that is. Hey, Karan. Hello from Australia. And again, anyone that is new, if this is your first time, please let us know, and I'll give you a shout-out with um, one of my painting materials here. All right, let me see what this color uh, looks like before I put it in. I think I want it to be a little warmer. This might violate atmospheric perspective at this point, but these blades of grass are definitely different in the distance, so. So I'll put that in with the palette knife first, and then I'll get a good old brush. And disperse it. Oh, hey, Kar uh, all right. Let me let me check here. Hey, Karam. Oh, what? Shout out to you here with my brush. Oh, what, 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 what? Uh, hey, Karam. Shout out to you with my paintbrush here. Welcome to the virtual painting sessions. I hope that you're enjoying uh, the live streams. And thanks for everyone that's leaving a like. Hey, Charles. I think the classical look of uh of an alien with a big head, uh, big eyes, small mouth, all points to the fact that the uh, alien's protective suit and helmet. Oh, it could be. Could be. But to be honest, in, in my opinion, if there are, I, I believe there are, not to throw anything controversial out there, I do believe that there are other advanced life forms, but I think they would most likely have some type of cloud consciousness. I think, I don't know. So I'm trying to paint in a different plane here. It's not quite working out though. So I'm gonna blur a little bit. We're gonna have a lot of fun come Halloween time. I like these ideas that everyone's throwing out. Good times, yet still serious painting. That's what I like. Let's see, what have I missed? What have I missed? Hey, Mr. Piano, I was wondering what aliens think of human art and painting. I don't know. That's a good question. I wouldn't know. Uh... Thanks, Karam. And again, if anyone is interested, um, again, my online classes. If you want to take your learning with me further, please check out my online classes. Again, just Google patreon.com slash artist. Remember, they're $10 a month. Just $10 a month. And you have access to all of the online lessons, virtual classrooms, and you can communicate with me um, as much as you'd like. And you can send images of your projects to me each week for virtual classrooms that come out on Tuesdays, Tuesday evenings. Alrighty here, let's see. Hey Nevlin, I'm glad you're uh, watching from the Philippines. Again, if this is your first time, let us know. I'll give you a shout out with my paintbrush. Hey Charles, uh, oh, hey, that's not directed towards me. Hey Daisha, yeah, I think that aliens would have cloud consciousness. Like, meaning they would probably have a network of consciousness and not so much be, like, attached to bodies. Um, I don't know. That, that's a science fiction thing. Cloud consciousness, like, uh, think about the cloud that we have. Like, iCloud has all the data. I think that aliens would have their consciousness, like, in the Internet or something. I don't know. That's my theory. Alien theory. And so again, anyone interested in the online classes, here is a sample, well, here is what we were painting today in the uh, online class uh, this morning. So this is one of the ongoing paintings that we are doing um, 
in the online classes that is project two which should be completed actually in the next uh, the next lesson that features project two and I gotta make sure that these lines are messing up here these lines have to follow perspective so vanishing point has to be followed so I'm gonna blur this <laughs> yep, if in doubt, blur it out. Yep, Stephen. Hey, Karam. Uh, what is your city and time at the moment? I am in Beltsville, Maryland at the moment. It is 7.51. Oh, did I miss something here? Um, so, again, uh, Nevelyn, if this is your first time, shout out to you. Dondo pointed out your name here, so if this is your first time, I'll give you a shout out either way. Uh, welcome to the virtual painting session, Nevlin. Um, John, what's cloud consciousness? Alrighty, um, I think that is probably a little beyond the scope of the, the lesson. I myself can't answer that because I don't know enough about sci-fi, uh, but in general, this is just my opinion. I'm probably going to get this wrong uh, because I'm not that big of a sci-fi person. But cloud consciousness is uh, a network, a streamed network of conscious, uh, you know, con individual living creatures, consciousness, consciousnesses connected through some kind of um, Internet. Of course, theirs would be more advanced than ours, but that... That's my interpretation of cloud consciousness. And it only makes sense that advanced life forms would use that, in my opinion. But I'm no expert in that. I consider myself an expert in painting, but not in uh, ufology or uh, sci-fi. I, I don't know enough. I don't know enough. All right, so now more planes for the landscape. Actually, we're kind of almost there. I just want to add more uh, depth to the trees. Yellow ochre. Now I'm going to get a little dangerous with this and put in warmer tones. So again, once again, anyone that is interested in the online classes, again, here's... A screenshot from the lesson that was filmed today for my online students so there's a screenshot from one of the ongoing projects hey John so basically we we are three years away from cloud consciousness as humans I don't know I don't know I have no clue we could be even further than we know in technology Hey, BVM. Hello from Ohio. In terms of technology, I'm going to be devastated if they discontinue uh, discontinue stick shift cars, uh, if we're talking about technology. I have never liked automatic cars. So if they discontinue stick shift cars, I'm going to be devastated. Now, I don't want this to be too light, so I'm being very cautious with the light on this tree. Hey, Mr. Pianoli. Oh, thank you. And again, anyone that is uh, new to the live streams, please feel free to let us know. You'll get a shout out with a paintbrush, meaning I'll shout out with paintbrush. More planes. 
because planes make trees look realistic. I'm not so much a fan of tapping uh, structure onto uh, trees. I like kind of, I don't know, like long brush strokes. Hey, Karam. Um, we could uh, paint a cityscape. I will say I may have to probably trace a picture for a cityscape um, just because of the complexity involved in drawing each building. But if anyone's interested in a cityscape, just know I may have to trace a picture for that. Hey, Nevelyn. Uh, I'm glad you've been following my videos for months. Thank you. Yeah, uh, welcome to the live stream. Of course, um, you know, I'll be doing these live streams typically around uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, Saturdays, sometimes a surprise stream in between. But I have had a lot of suggestions for uh, Twitch, to do Twitch as well, so... Um, I'm thinking I will start doing uh, Twitch streams uh, using uh, charcoal drawing techniques because it's faster and is more painterly. All right, now some detail in the gravel here. So. I'm going to put different little spots of value to get the effect of details in this path. Let's see. Hey, Mike Joyner. Oh, welcome to the live stream. Thanks for watching from uh, Mexico, Mike Joyner. Shout out to you, Mike Joyner. Welcome to the live stream. I hope that you're enjoying the live streams. Hey, Stephen. 40 years, uh, I was driving a manual car, as you guys call them, stick shift. Uh, and then two years ago, I got my first automatic. Yeah. My first car was automatic. It was a Toyota Camry. And then um, then I started becoming more interested in, in stick shifts. Saved up a lot to buy a sports car in my uh, early 20s. And then um, that was a Nissan 350Z, which I shouldn't have really bought, but I did, which was kind of dumb <laughs> when I was young. And then um, now I just have a Nissan Versa, which, of course, stick shift. I really don't like automatic cars. Hey, John. Do you think UFOs are automatic or standard? They got to be. They got to be stick shifts. And, like, the Fast and the Furious have, like, a thousand gears. So remember, planes, planes, and more planes. Um, so for the uh, path here, I'm going to start to put in. A, see the little light passage that you're seeing there? Any little detail that I can put in to make the uh, illusion of gravel, I will do now. And I'll even push the light a little bit down here. And I'll use a smaller brush to paint the effect of perspective. Uh, no worries, John. Yeah, it, it seems like um, there was some lagging or more lagging than usual. Uh, it looks like Safari, uh, my uh, my uh, web browser is trying to trying to give out, but we're still here. We're still pushing strong despite the uh, internet. Now we're getting the effect of distance all the way back here. 
And then that is where the trail goes way beyond our line of sight. Let's see here. Hey, Mike Joyner. I'm glad you're enjoying the, uh, the last stream in Gulf of Mexico, 200 miles south of New Orleans. Oh, wow. I'm glad you're enjoying the stream. All right, now I'm going to put all kinds of random texture to get the effect of the gravel. So we're going to make this more of a rough road. Individual little spots of value. Almost in a pointillist fashion. Alrighty, so the internet may be struggling, but we are still going strong. So now it's time to introduce another crowd question. So I'm curious. Crowd question here. What is your recent artwork? It could be anything, a drawing, uh, oil painting, acrylic, anything. And I will start with my answer. So landscape and UFO. That is the recent painting that I've done, which I'm still working on. Oh, wow. The disc. <laughs> the disc is off. I'm surprised no one caught that. Now the center line should be correct with the disc. Mike Joyner, still life in oil paint. Awesome. Three peas in a pod. Water, color, parrot, tulip. Oh, I'm glad you liked the landscape or loved the landscape. Thank you. Awesome, Stephen Bouguereau study. Awesome, Dondo, uh, graph, graphite sketch of your great-grandfather. Uh, let's see here, Mr. Pianelli, study of, uh, right, let me see here, study of uh, Maroney's Taylor. Awesome, I got to look that one up. Hey, Barbara, landscape in oil and iris in oil. Awesome. And again, anyone interested, if anyone's interested in the online classes, the uh, mentorship tier, uh, the, uh, sorry, I got confused. The, in the online classes, you can send original artworks to me to be uh, featured in the virtual classroom. You can send me uh, your original artworks along with your um, class projects. I'm actually uh, imposing a little bit of blue onto the pathway here because there would be some blue. I'm going to make the edge even more defined, actually. So let's see here. What have I missed? What have I missed? Hey, Harjot. Made a new account. Oh, okay. I don't know what happened. I didn't... I don't know what happened. But welcome back, Harjot. Sometimes YouTube is a little... That's a little uh, tricky. For instance, Harjot, I was locked out, um, signed out a couple times myself. Hey, Charles. Yeah, definitely. I'm glad that you have ordered some materials and are interested in starting back again. 
Hey, Steven. Yeah, definitely. So again, hard job. I don't know what happened with the with the uh, YouTube. But none of us blocked you, buddy. Don't don't worry. So I'm putting a little more definition into this edge. More so in this edge than back here, as you're noticing, to get the uh, illusion of uh, distance. So Harjot, the uh, crowd question is, what is your recent artwork? Uh, anything from drawing to painting to sculpting, anything. ABVM, Water Mixable, uh, Lucas Berlin, uh, of seven birds surrounding an old birdhouse. Oh, that sounds fun. That sounds awesome. Of course, I'm exaggerating the perspective a little bit more than the um, picture. And I've actually made it a little too light, but at, at, for some reason that doesn't really bother me too much. So I'm going to keep that edge, and now I'm going to put more, more character into the pathway. And perhaps darkening it a little bit. Let's see, what have I missed? I don't think I've missed anything. Didn't I say, what did I say, 155? If we get 155 likes, I'll paint a, a mask, a face mask, you know, like one of our Corona face masks on this tree. So we're actually five likes away from that. Which is wild. I can't quite get um, the textures that I want, so I'm going to start to use the palette knife and see if I can impose some very sharp shapes. And I apologize for the internet lag. Seems to be lagging a lot for some reason this time. But that's just the way it is with internet. Hey, Donda. Oh, we did make it to 155. Awesome. My computer's lagging a little bit, so I didn't get there. Wow, we have 155 likes. Now I have to paint a face mask in one of the trees. So, all right, let's do it. Um, let me first smoothen out this uh, little shape of pebbles or grouping of pebbles that I'm trying to paint in here. And now we'll put the face mask in here. And I'm definitely going to have to utilize um, wet on wet um, painting techniques. So remember, thinner paint tends to stick onto thicker paint, so that's what I'm going to have to do. Hey, Barry. All right, so I painted, after five months of nothing, a portrait of a, of a big, uh, big toothed man screaming. Oh, awesome. That sounds fun. Uh, Stephen... Have I ever used anything like sand to uh, in my paintings to add texture? A long time ago, I painted the cherry blossoms. I think when I was like, I think nineteen, and I put some of I put some cherry blossoms in the painting. I remember. Oh, awesome, Barry! I'm glad that um, these streams are inspiring you to paint again. I'm so glad. Face mask. All right, you asked for it. We're going to try to paint a face mask. I'm going to put in um, one of those blue ones, the disposable ones, I guess, so we can be somewhat environmentally 
friendly. So one of the blue ones with the white uh, rim. So I'll use the sky blue. And it's very thin. Put in uh, some of the Gamsol and the medium. And um, it's going to be very small. Actually, I'm going to need my uh, mall stick for this. Because I have nowhere to rest my pinky now. So there's the blue base for the face mask. And now I'm going to give it a accent so to make it look like it's actually resting on the tree. So if anyone's wondering what I'm doing, uh, I I mentioned earlier if we get 155 likes, which I'm I'm really really happy that we we somehow did manage to get 155 likes. Um I would paint in a face mask on one of the trees. So now we're painting in the face mask. I gotta be very careful or else this is gonna look like a speedo. So painting in the dark area for this. It may be too small to look like a face mask. So I may have to take someone's suggestion and put a face mask here. Not to promote littering or anything, but let's see how we how we do with this face mask. Now it needs to be a little thinner. You know, face masks don't really look like anything unless they're attached to, uh, or unless they're attached to someone's face. So, so it's gonna be quite difficult. Yeah, it's yeah, Barry. It's gonna look like the tree has underwear for a little bit. Now, of course, I gotta paint the sides. This will make it look less like underwear once I paint the sides. And less like a diaper, yeah, yeah, we'll get there, don't worry. So I'm making it even lighter now. So you can see the little, uh, the shapes for the mask. <laughs> Put a scarecrow uh, with a face mask in the foreground. That would make more sense, uh, actually. But if I put a, f a scarecrow in terms of perspective, it's going to take up like a lot of space. Now, I have no idea what a massive face mask would be doing on a tree, but you suggested it, <laughs> so we're painting it. And now, of course, the tree is blocked off, so I have to add more to the tree. Yeah, that is a good idea, a scarecrow with a face mask. But I think the scarecrow would probably take up too much of the composition. Which, by the way, I'm going to make this face mask looking thing very non-noticeable by the time we complete this painting. Let's see. Hey John, not trying to be sarcastic or anything, but completely destroyed the painting. 
I don't know. Well, if I destroyed the painting, I'm sorry. No, I won't destroy the painting. Actually, I might. I do destroy paintings if I'm not going to sell them. So there is a chance this may get destroyed if I don't uh, determine it to be for sale. What I usually do is get a blade and cut across the side of paintings and then rip it off and save the stretchers. In case anyone's wondering how I save uh, my stretchers, that's how I save stretchers. <laughs> it's an alien face mask. It gives a story, though the mask is on the ground or in the tree, down in a, a rush to get on the UFO and leave. Do you want me to put the face mask here and take it off of there? Is that what you, is that what you want? I, I don't I don't think that looks good there. And we're at 157 likes now, so I had said 155. We'd put the the face mask there, but now I'm kind of regretting that. All right, so we got one yes. All right, we're gonna do it. I'm not using lead white anyway, so I can do that. We'll put the mask on the ground. Sorry for any environmentalists. We'll we'll make it environmentally friendly. Face mask. So we'll put this tree back. And let's get the palette knife with this color. You see, if I paint the mask on the road, someone's going to say it looks like I left underwear on the on the road I kind of shot myself in the foot I didn't think I would get 155 likes I didn't think I'd make it to that let's see so Barry says put it on the road that makes sense hey John oh no worries um, so John one thing that happens is if you're like me and you don't have a lot of space and you paint hundreds of paintings you have to cut some of them up. It's just the way it is. So no, no need to worry, buddy. It's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. We're always going to be painting. Let's see. Hey, Charles. I would take the face mask away. It takes away from the UFO. All right. How many people don't want me to put the face mask in there? Because I, I don't think the, fa the face mask is going to look too much like underwear. If it's not attached to a face. Hey, uh, Muhammad, thank you for an art question. <laughs> Can you do a sfumato technique? Mm, from my understanding of a sfumato technique, it's more of a, I guess, ex ex expressionist type of painting. All right, so Stephen says we don't need a face mask. I feel sorry for whoever suggested the face mask, uh, but sometimes ideas just don't work out. I, I, yeah, I think a UFO in a crop circle is enough because a face mask not attached to a person just looks too much like underwear. Okay, Charles says no mask. No face mask, Barbara. Okay. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Um so so in any case, now when it comes to um the actual development of this painting itself, what I want is for this painting to read its best at about, I, I want to say, eight feet away and without the photo reference. Yeah, yeah, sorry for whoever suggested the mask, but any, you know, it was fun. It was fun until it started to look like underwear. You know, all is good, all is good until there's some random piece of underwear in some unknown area. That's That's when you know we're in trouble, so... <laughs> That's just, that's when you know, that's when you know that you need to, to let the painting be. <laughs> um, so what's important is this, okay? 
that the painting looks well like this without the photo reference. So what's important is that this reads pretty well from about eight feet away. Um, and again, like I'm saying, um, all of the paintings that I don't put for sale, I destroy. So I try to keep a pretty uh, solid inventory of paintings that I know will be for sale. So what's important to me is actually what a painting looks like from eight feet away and the thumbnail, uh, what the painting looks like when it's tiny. Because whatever the painting looks like when it's tiny is going to reflect also what the painting looks like from a distance, just in terms of perspective. So I think we're actually um, almost there with this one because I didn't want to make it obviously uh, overly realistic. Let's see. Yeah, I'm probably going to earn a lot of dislikes for this, but that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, maybe the next, I don't know. I don't know, man. Face masks are kind of kind of difficult. But in any case, um what was I going to get at? So the important thing is that this reads well from a distance. Um so you know, one of the funny things is I received the most criticism on landscapes, which is the funny thing. Um because I actually try to paint landscapes uh, differently. Uh, so more like plein air. So make it mo look more like it was done uh, in plein air. Rather than trying to make it like a super finished one. <laughs> yeah, no problem, John. Yeah, I apologize if, if you pointed out the, the face mask. Um, yeah, I mean, if anyone's interested, these paintings will be on uh on Etsy for sale. I like the idea someone suggested a um an auction. For these paintings. I'm just trying to add more of a bright light across here. And there we go. That's the effect of light I was trying to get. And I'm going to differentiate between the cast shadow of the tree and the uh, form shadow as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little more blue to the cast shadow just because I feel like it's a little too similar to the shadow on the tree. Um, yep, yeah, that works too. Um, of course, uh, I have to take a high quality picture of this afterwards. So whenever you're painting landscapes, you know who does this really well? Soroya. <clears throat> Excuse me. Soroya is really good at painting uh, very realistic cast shadows in uh, daylight uh, to get the daylight effect. Hey Barbara, oh, I'm glad you've enjoyed the live stream. Yep. Um, so whenever five o'clock p.m. is um, uh, five o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, or just if anyone wants to look up what time is five o'clock p.m. in Maryland, that is when I'm usually streaming Monday, Wednesday, or Saturday. Sometimes a surprise stream in between. So a little bit of blue in the cast shadow, just to make it more, look more like the uh, shadow from the daylight. 
Hey, John. Oh, you're in for the auction? Okay. I'm sorry that I read that comment a little late. So that's a great suggestion. Um, let me put the photo reference back. I forgot. Um, so, yeah. I mean, anyone interested in um, doing auctions, live auctions, while the live stream is playing, we can do that. Certainly. I have to figure out how to do that with Etsy, but I'll figure that one out. And I think I would start the auctions at probably half... I have to think about it. Probably half the price. Hey, John. Um, so actually, Dondo is a little more versed in this topic than I am with the Super Chats. So Dondo, if you want to help John... If you don't mind it's uh so john it's called a super chat if you want to support the channel and i'm just adding a little bit of variation between this shadow and this one so see how i'm kind of making it a little more angled So I'm trying to follow the form of the tree, so I'm gonna add a little more there. Let's see. Hey Steven, uh, I don't know, I, I think they do. I think we uh, the clocks do go back. Hey, Charles. Oh, okay, so Dondo has answered the question. I myself don't know because I haven't seen act like a YouTube live, uh, live, so I'm not the most uh, versed in that, but there should be a, a dollar sign next to where you type. Okay, there we go. But again, um, yeah, no, no one feel you don't have to feel obligated to super chat either. You know, I'm very thankful that everyone is here. You know, I never obligate anyone to do anything. Hey Shirley, I'm um, I'm so glad that you enjoyed this so much. And yes, we are uh, pretty much almost done. I just have to sign the painting. And just fixing a few little things. And again, um, so to anyone that's interested in taking online classes with me, again, for $10 a month, again, here is a little sneak peek into what we were working on this morning. So this is a screenshot from this morning's lesson uh, for Project 2 in my uh, online classes. So again, if you are interested, please check out patreon.com slash upariartist and look for the online class slash mentor tier. Hey, Barry. Angry wife calls me to, to bed. Oh, I'm glad that you enjoyed the stream. <laughs> uh, I will be able to, to say that soon at some point as I am getting married in the near future. Very happy about that, I must say. All right, so I'm gonna stand back. I'm actually, I'm literally gonna stand up and see what this painting looks like from a distance before I sign it. Oh, my legs, my legs. I'm gonna stand up for a second and see this painting from a distance. So I'm actually pretty far away. I wonder if you can hear me. Um, so from a distance, the painting does look a lot better than close up. While I'm up here, I'm gonna get the painting that is for sale and show you it in person.
All right, I'm back. Um, so to anyone that is interested. Oh, okay. You have a good night, Charles. Oh, thank you so much, John. Alrighty. Uh, so I'm going to type out my email for you. And just, uh, so John, just email me. In, uh, in the email, make sure to write Super Chat. All right, so um, so John, here is my uh, Gmail. So just feel free to send me a um, a uh, an email. So John, please email here and write super chat. Um, so I know it, it's you. I did get about like fifteen emails <laughs> for the uh, for the image of uh, from others that uh, didn't super chat. So please just make sure, John. Uh, actually, I'll just I'll remember your name. John Kale. I'll just write your name off to the side here. All right, so I have your name written down off to the side. So please email me so I can send you an image. Um, I'll send you an image of this one uh, once I take the photograph of it. But also, in case anyone is interested, here is the painting in person that is currently for sale. I'll show you before I sign this. So this is the one that's currently for sale. This is the one that you're seeing here. Um, this is the only painting that I have currently uh, available for sale. So again, there is the photograph of it on Etsy. This is an 8x10 that I stretched as you see here, eight by 10 inch original oil painting that has been stretched. It's on some uh, thick stretchers. I actually doubled up stretchers if you're looking here. I doubled up on stretchers to make it uh, an even more sturdy surface. So yep, this is the one that, the only one that's currently for sale in case anyone is interested. Thanks, Charles. So I will now put this one back. And it is varnished and ready for a new home. I just put this one back and I'm going to sign it and then wait for it to be dry and then I use Gamvar to varnish. So, yep, all that's left is a signature. Oh, yeah, how could I forget? <laughs> I forgot something big time, everyone. For all 64 of us that are still here. This is going to be fun. So again, John, please, uh, John Kale, please make sure to send me an email to my Gmail so I can send you the image of this uh, landscape painting. So what should I title this one, everyone? I want to see a lot of fun and creative titles. Uh, we have, how many of us are here? We have 61 of us here still. So thank you to all 61 of you that are still here. I want to see some fun and creative titles, especially because... We have a UFO in a crop circle. So come on, this is this is going to be really fun. I want to see some really fun and, um, you know, uh, comical titles. Let me take the photo reference out because at this point it doesn't need to be there. And I'm just going to go ahead and sign the painting. And I want to see some creative titles. got to be comical. And I believe I'm going to sign it right here. It seems to be the right place to sign it. And 
apologize for the, the laggingness of the connection. Let's see. Cropped out. Oh, yeah. Clever, Barbara. Very clever. Uh-oh. No, I wouldn't put that one, but... Uh, no worries. Oh, oh, British humor. The problem with classicists... Oh, that's a clever one. You know, because classical painters probably wouldn't want to put a UFO in their painting. Oh, clever. Oh, wow. Hey, Luis. Euphoria 51. <laughs> so Area 51, but Euphoria 51. <laughs> Euphoria 51. Wow. That's awesome. I think I need to make this darker, actually. More Gamsol. It's tough to get the right brush to sign, I must say. I, don't, I think this brush is too wide to sign. So please send your suggestions for the title. Remember crowd question, what should I title this painting? So far we have uh, cropped out one that I don't think I should read. And then uh, the problem with classicists and Euperia 51. Alright, the paint is not working with me here. Yeah, I'm telling you, Gamsol just doesn't have the thinning power that uh, Turpentine does. Let's see here. Yeah, Luis's, uh, Luis's title is hilarious. Uh, I wish I could read that one, I'm sorry. I can't read that one. Apologize, buddy. Okay, so I usually try to make the signature match somewhat with the composition. So since this area was very open and this area was very open, I had to decide between these two. And if I had signed here, it would be a little too much having a triangle randomly floating up here. So I decided to sign down here instead. Hey, uh, Bert. 2008 before 69. Oh, thank you. I <laughs> trust no pun. <laughs> oh, well, everyone likes a uh, Euperia 51. Heading to Stonehenge, Stephen. Okay, that makes sense. Heading to Stonehenge. There we go. Now it's now it's properly signed. Alrighty. Now let's see. So now the painting is signed. I almost want to make something hover towards the UFO. 
<laughs> but no, I'm not gonna. I I think I've gambled enough. Maybe an accent to the tree. I want to see some fun, creative titles. <laughs> no worries, Luis. Everyone likes your title. <laughs> oh, Paul. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, you want me to put a cow, Charles? You want me to put a cow? Uh, <laughs> I like this. Probably just a satellite. <laughs> that's what the government would tell us. Oh, it's just a satellite. Right. That's a satellite? Sure. <laughs> Charles. Put a cow floating in the... <laughs> Somebody w I, Why would a UFO be abducting a cow? Unless it really wants, like, a nice... Like a nice T-bone steak or something. <laughs> I don't know why it would abduct a cow. Diapers not included. <laughs> jaw, yeah. That's definitely something we would get, uh, all of us here in the stream. I mean, everyone here, you guys are so... All of you, everyone... Um, everyone making this stream so awesome. And diaper is not included. So we've got Euperia, uh, Euperia 51. Euperia 51. Probably just a cow. <laughs> I think the, uh, no, no, probably just, probably just a satellite. UFO takes its pet cow for a walk because milk is life. <laughs> because milk is life. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Stephen. Yeah, the Stonehenge. Yep. Uh, I wish I could visit Stonehenge. Fall 2021. <laughs> Nice, Dacia. In fall 2021, we'll have a, a UFO in some crop circles. Oh, <laughs> Diaper is not included. <laughs> that makes me laugh. Now I wish I could just paint a random cow, but it wouldn't work. Because the cow this far away would look like just a dot. Because you got to think about it. This is a tree in the distance. That tree is probably like 20 times bigger than a cow. And I like your title too, Deja. Fall of 2021. The aliens. So any more titles, anyone? We still have 58 of us here. Charles. <laughs> Tis a mystic place where the moon doth rise with a dragon's face. Oh, now we're getting very creative. Yeah, fall 2021 is nice. Although, it's signed 2020. <laughs> and then fall 2021. I'd have to change this to, to a 1. Mike Joyner, you really want me to paint a cow in there? I wish I could paint a cow. It would be like a little speck falling from the, falling from the UFO. All right, all right, we can do this. I can actually, I have actually visualized how this could work. All righty, if we get to 170, we're at 164. If we get to 170 likes, I will paint a tiny cow being abducted by this UFO. We'll do it. We'll do it. I can see it. I didn't visualize the face mask, but I can visualize the cow. Oh, no worries, Charles. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the band Spinal Tap. Hey, Luis, I usually take three hours to pick a name for a game character. Oh, wow. Yeah, it does take a while to name. What's up, Bert, 2008 before 69? Title, The Aliens Are Controlling Me. <laughs> oh, God. No, none of that. No, none of that. It's a prediction painting. Yeah, they should. Yeah, no worries. So, wow, okay, we lost a like. Okay, somebody does not want the cow. Okay, never mind. We're not going to put the cow. I get it. Somebody doesn't want the cow to be abducted by the aliens. Never mind. That's off the table. <laughs> then you would need a bucket to go with it for the milk. <laughs> oh, wow. A bucket and the cow. Yeah, I was thinking of a subtle cow, but we lost some likes, so I, I think I think uh, someone has voiced that they don't want the cow to be abducted by the uh, UFO. Oh, I know, Daisha. I was thinking of putting, like, a little speck here, like a little black and white speck to look like a cow being abducted by the uh, UFO. But we lost some likes, so... And we lost some viewers, so I don't know about that. <laughs> We're letting the crowd finish the painting. Charles wants the cow. Alright, so those of you watching that want there to be a cow abduction, leave seven more likes and we'll get to... We'll put the tiny little speck of a cow here being abducted by the UFO. Oh, thanks, Angela. I just got your, uh, your Gmail. It just showed up on my iPad. Well, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. The person who unliked is an undercover cow. <laughs> the cow doesn't want to be abducted. <laughs> oh, well, we got one like back. Oh, good emoji. Hey, good emoji. That's a, that's a reference for me. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Hmm. Where did the emoji go? Alright, so John says no cow. <laughs> Barbara says no cow. Because you need to be kind to animals. Okay, okay. No cow. Yeah. Yeah, no worries. Definitely don't want to get in trouble with this live stream. Of course, I love animals. Anyone that knows me knows this fact. Okay, Steven, no cow. All right, no cows. All right, now we're getting creative. So we, we've got a lot of no cows. All right, it's it's done. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it. Uh, photograph it. And we're good to go. So what I'm going to do is type my usual question here. All righty. So any questions, anyone? At this moment now, the painting is now complete. It's ready to be photographed. Uh, it's going to be set aside to dry, then varnished with Gamvar, and then placed for sale. And again, thank you to those that suggested the uh, auction. That would definitely be a lot of fun to do these uh, auction style. Yeah, no, sorry, Bert, 2008 before 69. We definitely got a lot of... Uh, uh, a lot of no's to the uh, the cow abduction, so we're, we're just going to leave that one. We're going to leave that idea behind. So any last questions, anyone? Any last questions? 
Which, by the way, I think I'm going to do a, uh, another still life, but of pumpkins next time. So that should be on Wednesday. So I'll just hang out for a little bit. Let's see if anyone has any questions. And again, I apologize if I offended anyone during this live stream. But, you know, it, it, fun and educational is what I'm after. Yep, yeah, Stephen, I have the pumpkins ready, actually. I went with my fiancé like a couple days ago to a, a pumpkin patch. I selected three of those uh, mini pumpkins. Hey, Desha, what will I name it? Hmm... Hmm. Uh, there seem to have been a lot of suggestions uh, to Eupereria uh, 51, so maybe that one, but I'll decide uh, once the painting is up for sale. Hey, John, the selling price? Well, this one is uh, slightly bigger than the one that's currently for sale, so it will be around the selling price of this one. So it will be around this price because it, it's a little bit bigger. But again, the bigger it is, the more I will change the curve of the price. So around this ballpark will be the price. Well, I'm glad you found the stream to be fun, Charles. And again, I apologize if I offended anyone uh, in the live stream. But again, it was a lot of fun. Oh, awesome, Barbara. I'm glad you enjoy it. Uh, Bert, 2008 before 6 9. Tell you what, when I was at the art school, Micah, they made us do uh, yoga figure drawing with pen and ink. And that was the last time I uh, did pen and ink. But I, I, I don't mind it. I could do that. Hey, John, do you think you might consider this a masterpiece in a few years? Yeah, definitely. I mean, what makes these paintings special is this experience. Um, because it's, it's not just a painting for a painting's sake. It's the experience that was, was had in the creation of this painting, which I think differentiates it from any other paintings of mine. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks to everyone that supports, uh, supported the channel. And everyone that's just watching. I mean, I'm very thankful to all of you. <laughs> can we de can we decide the name through poll on YouTube? Question mark Using the names we came up with today. Um, uh, I got to figure out how to do a poll, but yeah, we can do that. You're never alone with YouTube. That's true. Yeah, I mean, th this is a real community effort. Like, this is a real, uh, you know, a, a fun, happy community setting that we have created here. Everyone. And especially shout out to Dondo, everyone. So remember, everyone, uh, wherever you are, clap your hands. Uh, clap, 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 clap your hands for Dondo. Because he's definitely um, the best moderator I could have ever asked for. Hey, Power, Courage, and Wisdom. Uh, well, I'm sorry. Uh, I hope that I was a good sleeping aid for you. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, no problem, Daisha. Yep. Uh, I'll definitely let you know. And, uh, yeah, Daisha, let me know if you're ever back in the area and um, and if I'm able to teach classes in person, I can contact you. But it was definitely nice to have you in the, the live stream, Daisha. Hey, John. Might be a keeper for myself. Well, we'll see.
Yep, round of applause for Dondo, everyone. Uh, I'm not sure I remember that one, Stephen. Alrighty, so I think that uh, seems to be all of the questions. So uh, again, thanks everyone. This this has been a really fun live stream. This has been a live stream unlike any other, I must say. Hey Charles, what's my live stream schedule? Um, it's it's uh it's usually 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, Monday Wednesday and Saturday, but sometimes it may vary. But that's usually the schedule. Hey John, do I clean my brushes completely or slightly? Um, I use honestly. I'm going to swap this out once I'm done filming. I have Gamsol in here, but I really don't like it. I just used it because I didn't want to use up my turpentine. So I'm probably going to put some turpentine in this and clean off the brushes. Um, but I, I clean these with just solvent. But these I clean twice with solvent and then soap and uh, hot water. Uh, I use dish soap and hot water after cleaning this with solvent. Yep, Stephen, yeah, I'll, I'll check that out. And thanks everyone for showing Dondo your appreciation. Definitely wouldn't be able to do streams like this without Dondo. Hey Doreen. Um, yeah, it was a, Doreen, this was a very interesting live stream. Uh, I may have stepped on some toes with this live stream in particular, but it was definitely a fun live stream. And, um, Doreen, remember, um, uh, usually Monday, when Monday, Wednesday, Saturday around 5 p.m. To everyone that suggested the Twitch, I've already purchased my, uh, paper and everything that I'll use for, um, the Twitch channel for charcoal drawing. I just have to figure out how to set that up, but I'll let you know when I do that. Uh, but yeah, Doreen, no worries. Um, this will definitely be available as a pre-recorded video, probably earning a bunch of dislikes, but um, the the footage will be available as a pre-recorded video. Yep, Luis, thanks for joining. <laughs> um. I don't know whose idea the flying saucer was, Dorian. I think it was my idea. I might have set myself up for that one. Yep, it was all good fun. Yep. Even though I've probably earned myself about 10 dislikes by now. <laughs> Alrighty, everyone, what is it now? We are actually about to hit four hours. I'll stay for the fourth hour, but then, then we're going to sign out. Yep, no problem, Luis. Oh, Dondo's so modest. Thanks, Dondo, for everything. And uh, everyone, thanks, everyone. I'm going to wait about a couple more seconds till the clock hits four hours because I don't think I've ever streamed for four hours.
do you paint along uh do you do paint along videos these are kind of paint along um the photo reference that was used for this one is in the community section on my youtube oh no worries Luis. yep take care barbara and it looks like we have passed the four hour mark uh this is a uh I've never streamed for four hours, so th this is definitely a lot of fun. And again, thanks everyone so much. Hey Fred. Yeah, I know, it's difficult to make everyone happy. <laughs> I wonder what kind of hate mail I'll get for this one. <laughs> but yeah, I'm glad that everyone likes the stream. And thanks for the uh, 169 likes. That is a lot of likes. I could have never fathomed. Thank you so much, everyone. All right, everyone, have a great, um, have a great night, afternoon, evening, morning, whatever time of day it may be for you. Oh, thank you so much, power, courage, and wisdom. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Yeah, good night, Doreen. Oh, thank you so much, uh, DJ Crane to B fourteen. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing to the YouTube channel. Alrighty, so time for the usual outro stuff. So uh, thank you all so much for watching. If you would like to be notified when I do live streams in the future, including uh, surprise live streams, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. I believe the way it works is that if you're subscribed and you click some kind of button there, I think it's like the bell icon or something, it'll notify you whenever I'm live. Again, if you would like to take your learning with me further, for $10 a month, please check out my Patreon account. Remember, patreon.com slash upariartist. Here is a screenshot from the lesson that was filmed this morning. This is an ongoing project. This is project number two, ongoing project. Um, one of many of the projects uh, for my online students. Online students can send images to me um, every week by Saturday night, 11.59 p.m. for a weekly virtual classroom. If you have any other questions, please feel free to contact me through my Gmail, including free sample lessons. Please contact my Gmail. I wish you all the best in all of your artwork. And I will see you. What is that? I will see you on the next one. Whoa, wait a minute. I got 170 likes. Wow, awesome. Thank you so much for 170 likes. Thank you so much for watching the stream. And I'll be back again, hopefully, if all goes well, Wednesday, uh, 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time again. Thank you all so much. I wish you the absolute very best in all of your artwork. And I will see you on the next one. Watch out for flying saucers, everyone.